Oh, whatever. I guess I'll just go ahead and do the whole uh, creation bit here. So we'll get to see that. It takes quite a while to do, so usually I start my stream after I've made everything. I also, I don't know, I'm a bit weird about showing it, but... Start off with the character. Each of your class is a uh, specific setup that they start with. I'm going to just do the same thing that I just did. This medium length, I feel, really matches... Uh, Rydia's look in her portrait in Final Fantasy IV. Not gonna do that because better way. Yeah, that's the one. This particular dress gives that hanging sleeves, which also uh, is seen in her character. Um, fine. Felt. You can set all the colors at once, which works for a uh, character like Rydia. Largely, her green color scheme is a uh, result of the time period. Early SNES days, of course, it was very difficult to have uh, complete pictures for everything, so... Uh, each of the sprites had a limited amount of colors, and Rydia, they decided to uh, make the focused green character. Here, actually, uh, but strangely, she has a lot more color in her uh, young sprite than she does in her larger, uh, her adult sprite. She goes fully green when, uh, when she goes adult. Art of War is the name of the tutorial. Again, I don't start the speedrun until I actually go into the... This gives me an opportunity to... Uh... Create all my characters without it counting against the speedrun time. Since I designed the speedrun, I get to make the rules. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the joy of, uh, it would still be faster to make sword masters just because of how powerful they are, but, uh... But I would just go with the default sword masters available rather than altering them, and that wouldn't be any fun. First character is a dancer. This gives us access to the soul of Shang Hua. Only class in the game that can have access to that style. Uh, soul of Shang Hua, no, pretty short.
spike. Yeah, it actually does kind of help. Uh, now we have Lena from Final Fantasy. Uh, Full of Zhang Hua has one particular ability that's uh, extremely overpowered. You're gonna see it most used in the game. I call it the spin to win. She goes into a little spin, comes out, and it just so happens that the uh, time required for it leads to an almost perfect stun lock. Yeah, I can throw off the timing uh, if they're it's almost impossible for it to throw off the tiding by getting up uh, too quickly. It can occasionally get off, uh, but it can foul things up by going too late. That's actually the bigger fear. But it's the overall most uh, useful ability in the game. However, the uh, Dancer has some disadvantages of being uh, incredibly... ...weak. The move itself that it uses is incredibly powerful, but the... Uh, However, if they decide to attack me, things go south very quickly, so... One of the things that I have to do is, uh... Which is why I have Swordmasters for the rest of my units. They serve as a, uh... Kind of buffer against that. Swordmasters have the best stats overall. Unfortunately, they can't use, uh, the super very best styles. Ones like the Soul of Shanghua, but uh, the next best I can really get, the katana, they can use, and combined with their stats, the weapon is really great. It's kind of, I sometimes try to express uh, what makes them so strong, but mostly it's uh, seeing is believing, as it were. Or rather, a uh, picture is worth a thousand words, and sort of the course of the speedrun, I'm going to be showing off just what that uh, is. Missions. Iron, you know. Iron pads. Oh, the brown. I need to make it slightly dark. Oh, that's easy.
Oh, that was not. Ellen. Okay. Okay. Here we have Final Fantasy Tactics. Hell you do. I have a soft spot for her in Chronicles of the Sword specifically in making her because she's fairly easy to make and uh, have it look pretty much like her character. Some of them like, I chose Tifa from FF7 because FF7 is just so popular. I personally don't like it among the best, but uh, the also problem I have with it is that it's really hard to make Tifa, especially since she isn't going to be using her fist. Whatever. Since they're all going to be using katanas, because that's the weapon that we The rest uh, can, in some fashion or other, actually use katanas. Zealous, not actually, but regular swords, but, you know, close enough. Rydia doesn't use the sword either, but uh, whatever, she's the dancer. Okay. Alright, now, finally, once again, let's actually begin this time, shall we? Okay. So, the Chronicles of the Sword. Special game mode. It looks like it's on fire. That's uh, probably a little visual bug since I got off to a false start. But, uh, strategy RPG game mode in Soul Calibur 3, the fourth game in the Soul series. Because Soul Blade came out first, so I'm like, okay, but everyone after that was Soul Calibur. So it's, uh, sounds a little weird to say if you aren't up to the history of the Soul series, but since first one was Soul Blade, then the second Soul Calibur, then everyone after that, they just said, we're going to keep calling it Soul Calibur 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now it's the seventh game, main game in the series. There are a couple of side games and stuff, uh, which I haven't played, but they're also a lot less uh, popular as well as being a lot less perfect. So that is the reason why I made my main character a dancer. That spin to win is the most overall most powerful attack in the game, both for dealing damage and reliably shutting down the opponent so I can deal the damage very quickly. Because far more important than just, you know, dealing damage in a single attack, uh, once it goes off, it prevents the enemy from doing anything. So I can consistently get that off. The AI is not uh, easily manipulatable in the battles for the most part. So I have to use abilities that uh, can get me that damage consistently and protect me from getting hit by counterattack. The one weakness is that it leaves me a lot of time that I'm open, and so the AI can swarm over me. There's a few tricks I attempt to use when I can to uh, make them whiff or just uh, give themselves opening so I can get it started. But once it's started, it is almost guaranteed victory. That's the first thing I do, that charging Great Wall attack. Uh, sidesteps me as I go forward, which makes a lot of attacks they use to hit me with, as well as getting me in range. And when it knocks down, it doesn't set up for a perfect uh, hit of the spin, but it does uh, usually give me enough time to continue it. So it's generally just the most reliable thing here. You may have noticed a slight hesitation before I started moving my second character. That was intentional, and it's part of the uh, under the hood speedrun tech in this game of which there's quite a lot of just very small things I have to do to maximize my time because the game pauses when I select a character to issue orders I want to issue as few orders as possible to avoid wasting a lot of time which over the course of a three-hour run would really build up and Characters once you issue orders they will continue on those orders until you get stop them until they die or until they're involved in a Soul Calibur combat, and that last one is very important. So if only one character is involved in a Soul Calibur combat, their orders are cancelled, but the other characters who are not involved in that combat, they will continue, they will remember what I ordered them before the battle started, and they will continue on. But if I move my characters too close together, they might both be involved in the combat, and then both of them will have their orders cancelled, and I'll have to pause the game again, wasting time in order to issue hands. So you'll see me doing that throughout the run. I'll probably have to repeat it once or twice. 
uh, because it's just something I do so commonly. Now, my main character in any percent, uh, most of the objectives in the Chronicles are to take the main enemy stronghold. That's the primary way to win. There's only about five uh, total missions where that is not the effective objective, where there's really something different I actually have to do in order to win. So most of the time I'll be putting my force into one big blob and just running straight treadmill toward the main capital as soon as I can. And because the battle, with one exception in the entire game, the battle always selects your main character or whoever is at the top of your character list be the first one fighting. This main character being a dancer is going to fight the most to get the most experience. It kind of works out conveniently for the speedrun. Uh, I wasted time by saving there. Which is very unfortunate. Otherwise I could have gotten a uh, possibly a green to start with. But it's not unusual for me to be a few seconds behind just because of small stakes in uh, execution. Now, whenever you uh, conquer a stronghold, you are automatically forced into Soul Calibur combat with whoever is defending it. So, just running up as near as the nearest stronghold and attacking it all at once is generally just the fastest way to go. But uh, the weak dancer will be doing the most fighting, get the most experience. But as backup, I have uh, sword masters who have much better stats. You can see that I have 241 hit points on my dancer and 280 on my sword masters. That is uh, how much more powerful they are. And uh, I'm actually making a slight mistake here. I'm doing this differently. Oh well. This is a small matter for the most part. I usually go the other way because even though it involves fighting more people, it uh, means that I don't have to uh, take another stronghold, which can tend to be a uh, time sink in and of itself. It would be very hilarious if this did end up being faster, because that did go down very, very quickly. Uh, strongholds take a lot of time to bring down normally. It's just uh, the biggest time sink overall in the game, except perhaps for the loading screen for battles, so you want to minimize those. But uh, as it turns out, that one did go down awfully fast. Now that I... We'll see the result, how close it gets to being uh, the time. In any case, for the most part, this is the two sections of the game, and there's not really much more to it than this. Uh, in this game mode, there are two different setups. You have your tactical map, where all the battles take place, and then you have your uh, Soul Calibur combat section, where you fight the battles against the Soul Calibur character uh, in the Soul Calibur combat. Uh, enemies can fight themselves on the battle map. There is no RNG involved. They do fixed amounts of damage. But they're generally pretty slow for the most part and uh, also unreliable since you're doing exact damage to each other. Your units will eventually be overwhelmed because you're fighting way too many. And uh, so I generally try to avoid that when I can. And again, luckily, all the battles, decisive battles have to take place in Soul Calibur combat. This is our uh, first cutscene. Cutscenes are unskippable, so you get to witness the wonderful early aughts uh, voice acting along with them. This is Abilia, one of our best friends and rivals in the game. Best friend and enemy, frenemy, rival. We are, uh, storyline-wise, we are a member of the Military Academy of the Grandal Empire. We are a cadet training to be an officer, military commander. And Abilia is the other sharpest woman at the Academy, and therefore our friend and rival. She, we, she will be both a companion of ours and a foe we have to fight uh, multiple times during the run. In various segments, she joins the party and leaves the party. and We have one more battle with her much later on as well, because she's a rival kind of thing, as we'll get to. There are three, uh, unlike Soul Calibur... One, which it's it's pretty much comparable time-wise, actually. Kind of funny that way. Despite the uh, kind of rough fight that I had there, that's kind of funny. Big deal. In 
Now we're having our graduation test against General Gerardo, who is teaching us uh, everything in the tutorial, our primary commander, as well as the uh, supreme commander of the military forces. He's also the head instructor at the military academy. But uh, unlike the main Soul Calibur game, which takes place on Earth uh, during the 16th century with uh, a, a historical version except with these fictionalized swords uh, causing political upheaval and such things, these two mystic swords of Soul Edge and Soul Calibur, but Chronicles of the Sword takes place on a different continent, a uh, fantasy continent, which is kind of in the same era of technology because it uses, you know, a lot of the same stuff. So it's got this late medieval renaissance feel to the armies and the situations and all that, as well as mixed cultures from all over the world. There are characters dressed as samurai in, in these nations, but these uh, there are three nations on this continent, the Grandal Empire, the Kingdom of Dalkia, and the Haltese Republic. And so we're part of Grandal. Uh, red and blue are both the colors of Grandal. One of the neat things about it is that the, uh, they do color code the forces to the uh, faction that they belong to, and for the most part, there are only two factions in each battle. There's a lot of potential for uh, more sophisticated and stuff in here. It's, it's a bare-bones skeleton, since it was just a game mode within a fighting game, uh, and was intended to show off the power of this creative soul, which I spent so much time doing before the start of the run to make my characters look like Final Fantasy character, uh, just to kind of show off the, you know, how neat this, even this uh, primitive early aughts character creation system is. And they've kept Create a Soul in all the games since, and the newest one, Soul Calibur 6, has a really wonderful character creation system, of course, but uh, that's not the one I'm playing. This has always been my favorite, specifically because of this game mode. I find it to be incredibly entertaining, this little mix of uh, light RPG tactical strategy game combined with uh, the fighting game format of Soul Calibur. Even though I take that fighting game element that makes up so much of the game and uh, <laughs> grind it down to, I press a couple of buttons to overwhelm my opponent. The AI in the game is actually quite good, if uh, a little bit random, but some of the enemies they give good AI to will absolutely dominate you if you're unprepared for them. But for whatever reason, it has something that most of the rest of the Soul Calibur games really don't have that I've ever found, which is uh, certain move sets just have certain moves that the AI has difficulty dealing with. And so I abuse the most powerful of these in order to uh, for the game, because that's the nature of a speedrun, beating it as fast as possible. It's always interesting whenever you uh, have comments on YouTube channels or in chat uh, for live viewing, watching speedrunners do things, they often will pull out questions about the authenticity or the reasoning behind doing things that make the game easy. You know, obviously cheat things, glitch things in the game, getting infinite MP because of this glitch in the game, how is that legitimate and stuff? But the nature of a speedrun is to complete it as quickly as possible and to use the resources at your disposal to do it. And hence, I, uh, for that cause, I have this game, which fully unlocked using the ultimate classes, except for uh, this one dancer that happens to work uh, extremely well. It's just in the nature of, of how it works. And it might not be the most entertaining, sadly, but it is definitely uh, fast, especially for me, since I'm really, despite the amount of hours and everything I'm putting in the game, I'm not actually that good at general Soul Calibur fighting. I don't have great reaction time or ability to do things like guard impact and, uh, you know, good good guard reactions and counterattacking and all the things that you're supposed to be able to do to uh, play the game extremely well. So now we've graduated. We've received our uh, assignment. We're now commanding a force on the border near the Kingdom of Dalkia. It should be a fairly safe location. It's in a remote place where which is of little strategic value to either nation. So we figure that uh, it's going to be a pretty easy, peaceful time for us. But uh, in the middle of the night, we're attacked by bandits. So, okay, well, bandits might be in this remote area. Now we have to deal with them. Uh, but things are about to get interesting from here in the storyline, of course, because video games are never uh, super duper simple. Now, I did an interesting thing here. I There are uh, unit types in the game. Units, which applies to the tactical map. You have, excuse me, classes which give you stats, which mostly affect your character, your hit points, your attack, your defense, which they call vitality, your speed, or agility, which is how fast you move around the battlefield. Dancers are pretty fast, even at low level. They're one uh, 
their one redeeming quality. You can see how big that spike at Agi is compared to the others in the little stat diamond that just showed up there. Uh, but also in addition to that, there are units that you can assign to your characters. They can be one of four unit types. Infantry, Knight, Cavalry, or Bandit. And they have different properties that mostly affect the world map. Now those, they can affect the battle map supposedly slightly, and I think I have seen a difference. It's hard to tell exactly since you don't see raw numbers while playing the game. Uh, I do get a feel for them having an influence, but it's not nearly as pronounced as it is on the battlefield. Mostly, uh, your unit type affects what happens on the battlefield. How quickly your units move, how much damage they deal to other units, how much damage they take, how much damage they deal to strongholds. Those are the four properties that matter. And the two that are most useful to us as speedrunners are movement on the map and movement uh, and damage to towers. And it turns out that bandits... Uh, do the second most damage to towers and are the second fastest movement map. And the units that are number one in those categories are number four, the last, the worst, in their in the other one. So cavalry are the fastest movement, but do the least damage to strongholds. Knights are very, very slow, like those knights are moving, but they do a huge amount of damage to strongholds. So unfortunately, the... Uh, the disadvantages outweigh the advantages for speedrun purposes. Cavalry move fast, but they don't do enough damage compared to how bandits, who are slightly slower, do. And while knights do more damage than bandits, they are quite... they only do a little bit more, and are quite a bit slower. That was a mistake, but oh well. And this is the, uh, power of this AI. The game, in general... The game is pretty well programmed so that your uh, lower level, lower tier units, in the earlier Chronicles, their AI is lower tier. They tend to be less aggressive. They tend to not do uh, powerful attacks and a lot of guard impacts and a lot of combos and things. And then, but as you get on later in the game, they'll be a lot better at blocking, a lot more aggressive uh, in counterattacking you and taking advantage of your openings, etc., etc. However, there's a little bit of a flaw in the system that the AI can and will choose to be ultimate at any point. And so that was a minor example of it. Luckily, it was with the Swordmasters, who were almost invincible at this point just because of their stats, the power of the katana, and the power of the special katana weapon they have. But anyway, most of the game I'm going to be running around as a bandit. However, before this battle began, I switched my main character here over to an infantry. Uh, because they are slower, and it's kind of, I, I really like the idea of it when I discovered this strat, uh, when I experimented and figured it out, because we're going slower to go faster, but it just so happens that, uh, you may have noticed already from watching, uh, thus far that loading, there are two things of note here. The first is that loading time for battles is extremely long. So, or that's that's the major thing that, that drives the reason that I've gone to infantry here. This is quite hilarious and very aggravating. As I said just a bit ago, the AI can decide at any time that uh, that particular AI unit is going to be the this early in the game, they should not have been performing that many attacks to aggressively do so much damage to me. I should not be down this much. This is really horrible, but it happens. And not consistently enough, and it's not any point. That's the worst part is that it's just entirely luck-based. You know, it, it just, where does it happen to be today? But anyway, getting to that. Uh... This particular stronghold, the first thing that drives this is that on this particular chronicle, I have to defeat all enemies. The objective is not to take the main stronghold, but to defeat every enemy on the map. So I can't just, I have to split my units up in order to most quickly dispatch with all the enemies. And if I, even though I have to fight all enemies, I can't uh, avoid fights, which is my number one objective in most of the game. I can and do want to uh, try to minimize the number of different loading, you know, battles that I go to. So I want to group enemies up together as much as possible so that I don't have to 
uh, get extra loading screens by fighting each enemy one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And those knights who are going to defend that upper stronghold will m move so slowly, they, uh, if I were to play as a bandit and or start closer to that stronghold, which I could do, which would theoretically be faster because I take the stronghold quicker, but I would take it long before those two reached, and then I would have to wait for them to meet me anyway, and I'd have to fight an extra battle and load an extra time. So it actually just happens to be faster to switch over to infantry there, which uh, by starting in the one position just happens to make the timing such that I take the stronghold right after both of the enemies get inside. So therefore I fight all three enemies at once, I get only one loading screen, etc. Now this is the reason why I had to fight uh, all the enemies here, because we just fought a couple generic Grandal soldiers. Just like, like I'd fought in the previous two Chronicles, you know, these generic Grandal, their name is Grandal, they're dressed in a set uniform. They're obviously your nameless red shirt basic kind of enemy. But why are they in this bandit army? It isn't laziness on the part of the uh, developers. They didn't forget in, in the first non-Grandal training fight, accidentally put a couple of Grandal soldiers in here. No, these are bandits dressed as Grandal soldiers, as the next Chronicle explains to us in the story. Dalkia attacks us, so the next Chronicle we're going to be fighting Dalkia, and they claim that uh, we are... We, de we attacked them first, and so they declare war on us and begin an invasion in retaliation for that. And we realize that uh, these bandits here on the Dalkia border must have also attacked Dalkia using these uniforms to, in order to incite a war between us. Now, if this were a normal RPG, at this point, we would uh, probably quit the army or be assigned on a special task to find, track down these bandits and figure out who they are and what their evil diabolical plot is. And we find out that they're trying to incite a war to uh, disguise the fact that they're going to summon the great giant emperor. But no, this is a more tactical strategy RPG kind of thing, not a uh, not your classic JRPG. So instead, we remain in the army and we just fight Dalkia, even though they're victims as well. You know, we... We're just soldiers, what can we do? So now we begin our counter invasion. And we get introduced in this chronicle to our primary rival and uh, enemy, Luna. She, we will fight Luna a total of four times in this game, more than we fight any other character. And even after we fought her for the last time, she has some importance. Uh, I'm not gonna get more spoiler than that now. I might not even remember to uh, mention it when we get there because it's kind of a minor thing and uh, it means absolutely nothing in the speedrun, but uh, if I remember I'll talk about Luna and her stuff later. But This map is pretty big, uh, but luckily we can run around most of the enemies. I once again issued my commander an order to go forward first so that I would have to... Uh, so that he could, she could start the combat alone. And the other two could keep up their uh, command to go in. Now, because Luna is an important character, when we meet her in the field, she will automatically start a combat with us and give us in a cutscene. Uh, we don't want to fight in the field anyway as bandits, if we can possibly avoid it, because the one drawback to bandits, who are the very best for moving around the map and taking strongholds, is that they are complete and utter trash at, uh, in combat between units. Knights and infantry basically cancel each other out. Uh, knights, infantry take less damage, but uh, knights, you know, take more damage, but deal more damage, infantry take less damage and deal less damage. So they counterbalance each other in that way. Cavalry are slightly weaker than infantry. They do the same damage, but just take slightly less, or take slightly more, rather, uh, about as much as knights do. So they are the next weakest, but they're still quite a bit stronger than bandits are. But... That's okay, because as it turns out, you know, just fighting the Soul Calibur combat and abusing Soul Calibur rules is far and away the fastest way to get through the game anyway, so. Here is Luna. You're certainly a handful. I shall remember your name, as you are the only one who has provided a worthy challenge. Final battle, fight! <laughs> And she falls just like everybody else uh, to something there. Luna is generally not a really a great AI, uh, and her style is generally not a good one. Again, at any time the AI can decide to be a hero and have somebody be super strong, you can see that uh, she didn't uh, last very long. 
All right, now this is the first chronicle in which a Soul Calibur character shows up. Now I do have uh, several categories for this game. Some of them are meme worthy, but my my uh, favorite one overall is Soul Calibur percent, in which I have to uh, take the Soul Calibur characters out. So the Soul Calibur characters are actually present in the Chronicles of the Sword as optional mini bosses that spread throughout the 20 Chronicles. Uh, they're level 60, which at this point of the game would be extremely hard to beat. Uh, at least you would think so normally. Uh, definitely a lot tougher than than these guys in general, of course, at least. But, uh... But it's kind of just a fun little thing that, uh... You can totally ignore them most of the time. They're usually in far-off uh, places. Not uh, really close. So it's uh, quite easy to avoid them. And defeating them takes a bunch of time, but I have a special pleasure in a category that requires me to track and fight them down. One of the things that makes them interesting is that they're in their secondary outfits, some of which are quite funny, like... And it gets right off the bat with the good one with Astaroth, because he's a hammerhead. We won't see him, though, so I'm going to stop talking about that. Uh, I performed a technique there that I used several times during the run called, that I call a plug. Enemies cannot enter the same square as a square that you occupy, and you can't enter a square that they occupy, because even though the map is, they're moving around based, it seems pixel-based, there are actually squares that they occupy on the map. Also note, this guy is, for some reason, extremely tall. Which doesn't really, and he's also beating crap out of me because he is the chosen one. I haven't gotten any super bad chosen ones who've killed me yet, but I've gotten quite a bit of bad chosen ones who think the, that they need to make the fight interesting. We don't want an interesting fight, this is a speedrun. But, uh, when you're defending a stronghold, you can at any time choose to start a battle with your uh, units inside the stronghold in order to fight the enemies that are attacking it and preemptively get rid of them. But the AI is not programmed to ever do that. So if I am attacking a stronghold and they want to move through that stronghold, they just can't and they won't. They'll just stand there inside the stronghold waiting for me to take it. So by doing that, I can, uh, if an enemy is going to reach me, if they attack me while I am attacking the stronghold, they will actually, uh, They will actually uh, stop my progress on taking the stronghold, then I have to fight them all, which would waste a lot of time. But by taking one unit off when they've uh, just about taken the stronghold, and going up and attacking that stronghold, I form a plug to prevent them from entering, so they are removed from the equation and my other two characters can finish the fight. It's a lot faster than having to deal with them in Soul Calibur combat, of course. All right, so now I have to deal with uh, these three characters who are running down to attack me here. And then we will see how well this will work out. I've tried many different things here, just little small changes of this. I have to defend this because even though there are, uh, there's only ever one victory condition for each battle, there are multiple loss conditions. You can lose a lot of different ways. In almost every... In every Chronicle that has one, Chronicle 20 is the one exception. There are no strongholds in Chronicle 20. But in every other Chronicle, if you lose your main stronghold, you lose the game. You have to restart the Chronicle. You get to keep all your experience, but uh, it's essentially a dead run in a speed run because uh, it costs all those minutes. It takes several minutes before your stronghold could possibly be taken, so that's a 5, 10, 15 minute loss, depending on how long the stronghold is and at what point you lost your stronghold. If you, all of your characters die, which you'll pretty much never see happen in a speed run, I'm just not that bad, uh, I lose the stronghold. I lose the, the Chronicle. But there is a third way to lose on this map. If this stronghold I'm defending right here were to fall, I would lose the Chronicle. Uh, the, the actual way it's programmed is that if I lose both sides of the bridge, I lose the Chronicle, but it is actually totally impossible based on the movement of the units and how they work and defend for me to conquer the other side of the stronghold and allow mine to be taken as well. It just, they wouldn't go way around to take it in that way. If they did, I would be safe as long as I took the other side, but it just doesn't happen. So essentially, I just have to prevent this stronghold from falling. Uh, and because they have several units over here moving to attack it, I have to keep one unit here to defend it. 
I also hope to make this unit is uh, so far away now, and there's only one stronghold between me and the main one, which is my victory objective. That normally I wouldn't uh, care about. Okay, so that's it was the actually uh, the uh, condition of the thing that did it. All right, that's fine. Decisive battle. Now, my other use, so unfortunately, it's because I only have to take this stronghold and then the main one. If I were to order my character to try and run an attack to help make it go faster, she wouldn't reach in time to make any difference. So I just order her to move forward, and that entices one more enemy to come and attack me so they won't re retreat to defend the main stronghold so I don't have to fight them. So with the Soul Calibur characters, Ivy and Cervantes, who don't move, along with... Uh, for some reason, the boss, Rowan, this is the only chronicle in the game where the boss does not wait inside the main stronghold, but he's on the horse to the left of uh, the stronghold I'm taking, who'd been wandering back and forth uselessly. He is, for some reason, outside, and he won't be able to reach me, so I won't have to fight him. And then this one that I've let off. Uh, every other character is going to be able to, either I have to fight uh, because they're attacking or because they're defending but I've managed to uh, pull off one more of the four, so that saves me, you know, each fight is about 30-ish seconds, so it saves about 30 seconds. <laughs> Do that little aggressive move to peel him off. And again, delaying so that uh, I don't have to give multiple orders. This is one of the... Uh, Chronicles that has given me a lot of trouble recently, so I could potentially save 30 seconds quite easily as long as the fights don't go pear-shaped. But a lot of these early fights have been going pear-shaped recently and been causing me a little bit of heartache because I've been trying to grind out this any percent. I really gotta just stop talking about that, though. Final battle fight. Chinese sword can be... Uh, kind of nasty style. It's one of the ones that tends to be more aggressive and have fairly fast attacks that interrupt me, as well as ones that tend to hit medium or low. One of the nice things about the spin is that it does advance forward uh, in a crouch, so if they do any high attacks, they will pass over my head, but if they attack mid or low, they'll intercept me. And so again, it's all a matter of luck, pretty much, if they decide to uh, try and intercept me, or if... Uh, if they actually manage to intercept me or if they fail to. Feels good to be getting back into this though. The one problem is now that this uh, the speedrun feels extremely long to me now. It was the first speedrun I did, and it was over four hours when I first played it before I got uh, really, really good and started figuring out strategies to cut down time and everything. And now I've got it down to, I wish I could get it under three. That would be uh, exceptional. That's what I really want to do. My goal is a sub three. Theoretically, I should be able to get somewhere close to 256, 257. A little bit deceptive, but that's my sum of best. Deceptive because sometimes I split late, so that would lead to... A couple of seconds on a, on a gold of however long it was, which I'm not super duper diligent about fixing. I just don't really think it's that much worth it, but... Oh jeez. Again? Okay, there, there. So much for saving time on this one. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, this is just frustrating me so much. Battle three, fight. And I'm just not the kind of person, especially uh, a half hour in, who wants to restart because of a bad thing. But that's almost about what I'm really getting. But it, it almost doesn't matter, because every time I run now, I'm getting a really horrific event happening in my early chronicles, which is killing my times.
Battle 5, fight! All right, so that's that. You never stood a chance. I'm not going to lose as much time as I thought I was. It's I'm I'm still actually going to be ahead of my PB because I think my PB I died even earlier. Really crazy, but this was a nice clean death. The rest of the fights were okay, so I'm still gaining time. But even so, it's so, so frustrating. The worst part is, my PB, the thing about it, and the thing that's making this such a, a tough grind, is that my PB was... It was just a run I'd done after a long hiatus. And so I had a rough beginning to it, and I thought, uh, oh well, you know, that's what happens when you haven't played the game in a while. And... I just wanted to get it done because I was going to be using it as a uh, submission video for uh, GDQ and RPG Limit Break, mostly, and that's all I really, really cared about, as well as, you know, a few other online marathons that I post for all the time. And so I wasn't thinking about much, but then the end game, after my, you know, I, I didn't even really think that I could PB after going through Chronicle 15, uh, finally... Uh, failing to do a big strategy that I really love that I've come up with uh, for Chronicle 15 and failing to do that but having a wonderful Chronicle 15 but even so I was already so far behind I didn't think that uh, it was possible to PB but then my last two Chronicles were so absolutely fantastic that I ended up PBing by about 30-ish seconds I think yeah something like that so I, I got a very salty PB from that and since then I thought well if I got a PB playing so horribly, I should be able to get a really, really good PB if I can just clean up the things that always were easy for me. And now all of these Chronicles that were super duper easy, I never used to ever worry about dying before, like, Chronicle 7 at the earliest, if things go very pear shaped on the ice place. And now, last five or so runs on any percent I've done, I just keep getting these stupid little deaths in Chronicles 5 because the AI is deciding to start going into hero mode way early. I had a, I've had three of the experiences so far, and two of them I managed to escape without too much trouble, but the last one was not. It's the double-edged sword of using a dancer. Dancers do so much damage with the spin to win and dominate so thoroughly, but if they get attacked, there's not really a lot that I can do. There's, they don't have uh, enough strength to use any other tactics to do enough damage reliably. I'm, again, not very good at being defensive in the first place, and that isn't very speedy, so I don't want to try and do the kinds of things you'd do if you were, you know, playing in a tournament or online or whatever to try and guarantee a win. It's totally different when speed is of the essence. And quite hilariously, when I'm busy, you know, apparently distracted talking about stuff, I just absolutely blow through it. Like that, whatever. This is strangely, I think, not a game where I would do much better if I didn't, f if I focused on it entirely and did it offline without anybody, you know, without trying to chat with audience or whatever. Because it's it's really not most of it isn't all that hard. At least with the battles. I actually do uh, mess up more with my command in the field when I'm getting too much into my topic I'm talking about than uh, other things. Anyway, I'd like to get back to the storyline. So we're at war with uh, Dalkia. Abelia has joined us. She's one of our uh, units we can use now. She's our second in command and offering and stuff. This is our second battle against Luna, and this time she's brought her Cluster Pemdo. I don't know where the name comes from. I still need to look it up, and I haven't bothered yet. That's unfortunate. That's the Whirlwind effect. Uh, this is the first map where missions become important. You may have seen the mission uh, box if you've been paying special attention to uh, all the status boxes and stuff. You've seen mission when I've highlighted uh, strongholds before. And what a mission is, it's kind of a weird term, but it's one that is that Soul Calibur uses consistently. 
When Soul Calibur talks about a mission, they mean a special effect on a battle that makes it more difficult for you. And so, uh, it's the thing that makes these battles unique and interesting in the game. Uh, more so than just, you know, what you would think with 200 uh, battles uh, that I have to fight each game, especially uh, considering the moves I always spam. But they have an effect on the battlefield. Like, Whirlwind actually blows you in a circular motion, pushing you around the map. Uh, at low levels, the uh, missions will affect both characters, but at higher levels, it will only affect some. And I do this particular route on this map in order to avoid the worst of them, which is ice, which should need me, need no explanation. It's ice physics. Uh, if you've ever played any video game that has ice physics, you know just how awful ice physics are. They're about the worst thing that can happen to you in a video game. You know, the worst thing that they can do to make you angry, other than perhaps leaving you completely... Uh, now, normally we'd have to fight there because the objective of this is to defeat all four of the Cluster Pemdo and Luna, not just to take the main stronghold. But uh, as it turns out, they're programmed to defend the main stronghold, so if I go up this other route and start attacking it as I did, they just fall back and I get to fight all three of them at once. Which also saves time because I, again, have a more limited amount of loading screen and such. All hunky dory. There we go, now she goes off. Well, that's rather convenient for me. Battle two, fight. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay, dead. That's not bad. This was another place where I died, so I can potentially save a lot of time as long as uh, I don't die to Ag. Battle three, fight. And she's uh, doing her best to not uh, cooperate already. That is not really all that good of a ring out because... Okay, good. Oh, that was scary. I think I'd be willing to put this on hiatus for a while, retire it, uh, even if I can get somewhere like a 302, 301. And I still have the potential for that at this point. Still enough places, even though I only gained 20 seconds by Chronicle 5. I'd really like to be a minute ahead by then, considering how rough my early portion went on my PB, but this is a, a good one. Almost a gold, actually. A minute ahead, that feels good again. Now I have to have a decent Chronicle 7. I can't risk a death here as well. I didn't on my PB, which... Felt good after having two deaths in a row in two Chronicles. So we've conquered most of uh, Dalkia by now, and suddenly the Haltis Republic declares war on us. They're seeing blood in the water, and since our forces are all invading Dalkia, they probably think they can grab some easy territory from us by attacking our less defended borders, uh, since we're, you know, already involved in a war. Fighting a war on two fronts, as they say, is never a good thing. Uh, so we have been ordered to suddenly pull our forces all out of Dalkia to lead the counterattack against Haltis. Uh, Abelia has been pulled away, however. She's been left in charge of our forces that are in Dalkia. She's basically doing mop-up duty. And as far as our characters are concerned, the rest of our party, they think that she's going to get all the glory after we did all the hard work, and now we have to do more hard work fighting uh, fresh Haltis soldiers when we're weary from fighting for the last however long we've been fighting. Uh, and then General Gerardo shows up at the beginning of this chronicle, and he says, You look like you're in a bind, it sounds. It sounds like you're in a bind, at least for what your guys are saying. I'll help you out. And so he ends up joining our party here. It's really a hilarious thought, you know, and, and kind of shows RPG story versus uh, any kind of realistic reality. Because, again, he's the general of the entire army. But he has just uh, commanded himself into the... Uh, under the command of a young, unproven captain who hasn't even been, you know, had been graduated from the academy for more than a year. But I guess since he is the supreme commander, he can do whatever he wants. So now he's our adjutant and will be our primary voice describing tactics and situations going forward. And so we advance against Haltis. We won't be fighting them for very long, however, as we're going to see uh, starting in the next chronicle. It looks like I got lucky.
kind of an interesting chronicle because it uh, almost looks like a, a MOBA map. <laughs> One of your classic ones, three different lanes with outer towers leading to the enemy's uh, main stronghold. But, uh, okay, Tifa, well, that's fine, whatever. All right, now everybody else will have enough time there. That was slightly rough. That was quite slightly rough, but uh, not super huge. But anyway, the AI, the programming of the AI, uh, each individual unit has specific scripts that determine their actions. And they're actually quite sophisticated and in-depth. And uh, playing this game a whole lot, I haven't cracked this game. I really wish that I uh, could to see under the hood and see a lot of the values and things and how the programming works. But just from playing literally thousands of hours into this game, I have... Uh, identified certain uh, the properties of how these units move around and some of them are extremely simple they stand in a place until one of my characters gets close and then they will act either falling back to defend or rushing forward to meet me oh i didn't uh, build that one whoops well i can do this fine and sometimes they're a lot more complicated and a slightly different movement pattern or one of my units as opposed to another moving forward to a different place will cause them to act in uh, according to script B rather than script A. But uh, on this map, the particular properties of them is that they are generally programmed to try and chase down my units. So normally you'd think they'd be assaulting the three lanes or whatever, but since I go screaming straight through the middle, they all go forcing themselves into the middle to try and fight me as well. Uh, so that's why I fortified that behind me, so that they won't be able to reach me before uh, I take their main stronghold out. Just a little amusing. So this is going to be our first encounter with ice in the game. One of only... There's only two times in the game we actually have to deal with ice in any percent. Otherwise, I generally get to ignore those uh, places, which is good. Decisive battle. Uh, ice can be really bad. Luckily, the spin to win auto tracks well enough on ice that it's still fairly reliable, provided I can get it off in the first place. But ice is still super dangerous, especially since it can lead to ring outs. Now, uh, I haven't mentioned, even though uh, you may have noticed if, as you've been watching, that uh, I've gotten a couple of ring outs that haven't killed the enemy. Which, uh, if you're familiar with Soul Calibur as, at all, that's uh, certainly odd, because uh, in every Soul Calibur game, Getting a ring out is an automatic victory. This isn't like, say, Dead or Alive, which have multiple levels, and if you knock somebody out of bounds, they'll fall and take a lot of damage and go down to another level. These are all one level, and a ring out is an auto victory. But uh, on in Chronicles of the Sword only... Please stop attacking mid. Those are a lot of those mid attacks you're talking about. Luckily, she is at very high damage, so... Ooh, so close to falling off. But in Chronicles of the Sword only, they decided it would be too OP, especially against bosses, if a ring out would mean an auto victory. Uh, which is kind of odd, because they could just put us on maps that don't allow auto, you know, ring outs, because there are a few of those. They do that, or they just prevent ring outs for certain fights in uh, Libra of Souls, for instance. But generally, to prevent it from being too overpowered, they changed it so that instead of doing all of your health and damage, is effectively how it works, it does half of your maximum health in damage. So if you're at half health or less and you fall out of bounds, uh, you are, it's, it counts as an automatic victory. But if you happen to be have, have more than half your health, you only lose half your health and the battle restarts, which can sometimes be bad for my dancer because then I have to reset up my stun lock uh, and they get all the more opportunities to be aggressive and stop me and hit me before I can get it off. But uh, if I... But in general, I prefer it because on dangerous places like ice, if I fall out of bounds, I at least have a uh, chance of recovery. And even though I get a lot more ring outs than I suffer ring outs, the time save of a ring out versus the time loss of a ring out for me is uh, also super proportional. I would lose a lot more time than I gain by getting ring outs victories, so I'm perfectly fine with only losing half health. It doesn't affect me 
nearly as much as it would if uh, that happened, especially with my sword masters who can recover a lot of health very quickly. But still, uh, it's very dangerous there. Perfect. Okay, not too bad. A little bit faster than my uh, PB time, I think, so I'm still going to be good going on. To this is the first time in quite a while that I've been nicely a minute ahead going into uh, here. Now, there's a weird thing that happened here. Halfus, who we fought in the ice place, was supposed to be the boss, and he had a lot of dialogue after we defeated him that indicated that he was retreating and he was shaking his fist at us. And all of a sudden, uh, it is implied that this woman, Mooncalf, we just fought, killed him. Strangely. And she says the country needs to be destroyed, but as she attacks us, she says we're not going to be allowed to be the ones to do it. And suddenly, there's a new enemy that we're facing. So, we're fighting green, and there are little blue dots on the map, and they are no longer our enemies. They're our friends we're trying to save. But as it turns out, the Haltis Republic only recently became a republic, similar to France in the 18th century. Uh, they just had a revolution. They, in a bloody spectacle, they killed all the nobility and uh, tried to form a republic. But the republic, you know, has been around for less than a generation and still isn't very strong. So... Uh... As it turns out, one of the uh, provinces is ruled by a man named Demuth, and he has just declared his province of Meleda as the true country, and that all of Haltis belongs to him, and so he started a civil war. He suddenly has a lot of forces that sprang up out of nowhere, and he is conquering Haltis from within at the same time we're invading them. Now, since Haltis is collapsing on itself and, and everything, we could use this opportunity to just walk away. But as we're watching the uh, Haltis people get slaughtered, our character, you know, who is not allowed to make moral decisions, we are not allowed to make moral decisions for ourselves, the game makes the moral decisions for us, and we've decided we aren't going to stand for this, and we are going to be a humanitarian and save the poor Haltis soldiers who are getting slaughtered. So, we attack Maletta. Okay, whatever. So, this map has a loss objective of uh, losing more than two of those Haltis soldiers. The hilarious thing is, though, I talked before about the weird AI scripts that the enemies have. Pretty much all the enemies are programmed to fight me, not the Haltis. They don't care about the Haltis. They will only fight them if they encounter them in the field. And once two units start fighting, uh, they can't do anything else until they're either they are dead or their opponent is dead. And of course, if they are dead, they can't do anything else. Although our characters will respawn in, uh, in a certain amount of time, as long as we don't lose all of our characters in one go. So I actually uh, started my main character way off to the side. Again, a be slow to be fast because that happens to manipulate one more of the enemies to attack a Halti soldier instead of me, you know, just runs into her trying to get to me and therefore will not be involved in the combat here. I've had a lot of uh, craziness with this chronicle uh, speedrunning wise and actually casually as well. There was no other chronicle I put as much effort into trying to solve because I wanted to save all the Halti soldiers, and uh, Cannon, who I just saved, was actually the one who I could never save in time. It was the, uh, because I started using infantry, and I just thought that since they were your perfect bread and butter, they were the best ones to use for a while. But uh, infantry cannot move fast enough or take the strongholds fast enough to save everyone if you're spreading your guys out to save them all, which is what I did, not realizing that they were keyed to me. And... So I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I started speedrunning it, and I tried a bunch of different things, and finally I was like, okay, I don't need to... It doesn't look like they're taking everybody fast enough. If I put all my units in a big pile and run straight through the middle to the main force, uh, I can avoid a lot of the fighting. I should be able to save one. You know, they. I should be able to get them before they can kill everybody off. And then, much to my um, completely amazed surprise... Everybody gathered in the middle around me and totally ignored the Halti, so I ended up losing more time because I had to fight every single unit on the map. So I tried a couple of different permutations and things and finally settled on this one, which by having the one leader way over there, I uh, manipulate that character on the bottom into fighting a Leon. The one character up top trying to get to uh, us there fights uh, Larage. And so that's two characters I don't have to worry about. 
I'd love to be able to manipulate more out of the way, but I just haven't found a way to do it yet. So this is the best I can, the biggest compromise I've come to. Now there are a total of five Halti soldiers on the map, and uh, there are a couple of points in the game where there are optional characters who will join you if you either defeat them or rescue them. And this point, uh, Canon, who I rescued, will join me. Virage, who I am allowing to die, will not. Aelion always joins you, even if you let her die, which I just let her die, but she's going to join me anyway because she is uh, the scripted main commander and she has a conversation with us after this is over. Uh, they didn't know who you might save, though, so they selected her as the leader, and they, I guess they figured she's probably the easiest to save. Or so, I don't know why the reason, what the reasoning uh, was behind it, but... But that's the way it goes, but whatever. It doesn't matter in the speedrun, of course, because I don't use any units except for the ones that I create, because they don't give me any sword masters that are really powerful, so why should I bother? If you're playing casually, uh, of course, getting the different units can be interesting, especially if you uh, just want to use them and or you want to level them up, which you can uh, eventually do. That sort of stuff, but it doesn't really matter. The two units that are totally untouched are the generic units. So they would not join you if you save them. They're just called Haltis, and they're very weak, but they're also pretty well protected. There goes Larage. Sorry, Larage. That messed up my thing there. One of the weirdest things about controls in the game is uh, selecting your units on the map. There are two different ways to do it. One is by using the R1 and L1 to cycle through them, and the other is moving the D-stick or the D-pad and then falling on them and selecting them. Uh, now, the thing is that they're totally separate from each other, which causes a lot of grief to me trying to control my characters, because it remembers R1 and L1 perfectly no matter how many battles you have, even if you don't. And even if you go around and use the D-pad to select, like, every other character, uh, it, the R1 and L1, it knows it was last on your main character, so when you press R1, you'll go to your second character. Press L1, you cycle back around to your last character. It always, uh, remembers that. And so sometimes when something interrupts in the middle of my giving orders, it can be hard to remember exactly where I am. First battle against Tile. We get three in a row against him, the uh, chief of the Valetta forces. Not that big of a deal, generally. The first uh, first two times you fight him. Even though he has a really nasty mission the second time. Pretty good Chronicle 8 there. Skipping text is, uh, there are a couple of, uh, RPGs that have text in a similar fashion. Uh, like Final Fantasy IX is, is one that I know of. When you have text in the battlefield like that, pressing one button fills the text box and pressing another button skips the text box. So by double pressing, I instantly fill and skip on to the next, uh, text box. Finally get five characters. We get to use all five of our guys. This is another one that I've struggled with because of the special objective, which is to defeat all enemies. Since I have to defeat all enemies, I can't just beeline for the very susceptible, uh... I'd mess that up, actually. There. That's fine. It's like, forgetting uh, what I want to do myself. Levels are not super important in this game, since it's all about fighting and stuff and uh, particular abusable commands. I can potentially, I can beat level 60s with level 1s quite easily. But uh, even so, as you get later on in the game, you know, having those levels is a good cushion, and they do kind of matter for the last, uh, the very last Chronicle, both for safety and for uh, a little bit of speed, because... Uh, it, your levels and attack power do affect how much damage you deal to other units in the field, which becomes important in Chronicle 20. But I still try to spread the experience around, especially at moments when I can. Since, uh, with the exception of one battle in the entire game, 
every time you go into a final battle, for instance, it always has you, uh, it always, uh, forces your top character, which is almost always the main character, into the battle first. Uh, and then if you die, it doesn't go to the next character, though it tends to wrap around. So it, it's, it's very weird. It's, uh, not always consistent either. One of the few things in the game that isn't, uh, kind of weird about it. So because of that, uh, when I get to choose the who fights, as I do when I'm defending places, I tend to try to give the experience to uh, lower level characters. So you notice there's a couple of colors on this map. Maletta has formed an alliance with Dalkia, and once again, because everything is color-coded, we have the actual yellow here, the actual Dalkia. And uh, guess who it is? Oh, Luna and her Cusser Pemdo. Of course, if Maletta's formed an alliance with uh, Dalkia to fight against Grandal, and Dalkia was going to send forces against Captain Rydia, naturally Luna would volunteer for the uh, opportunity to get revenge, because that's all she's about uh, after you beat her the first time way back in Chronicle 4. Battle 1. Fight! Uh, parenthetically, we must note that Dalkia was on its last legs. We had a series of heavy victories against them and were advanced far in Dalkia territory, and Abilia had been left with essentially cleanup duty. Uh, she's obviously not cleaning up very well. Uh, she failed her janitor skills because uh, if she were doing it properly, they wouldn't be able to afford units to send to reinforce Maletta. They would all be desperately defending themselves, of course. Uh, it's also more hilarious, the uh, units that have stonewalled her, when you really think about that. I haven't ever mentioned that before, but I'm going to have to mention it when we get there, because uh, I've kind of thought of it before, but just never talked about it, but it's funny. Anyway, the Cluster Pemdo are usually stupid, but Heldo actually does tend to be the best AI, usually, and to be the nastiest. Uh, because she's an, or at least because she's an assassin, she has the highest attack bar, so when she chooses to be aggressive, Battle she tends to do the most fight. damage. Not quite enough there, but that's still pretty quick. Final battle fight. A lot of the AI uh, in this map is really unpredictable and hard to deal with. So again, this is one that I've had to do a lot with trying to figure out uh, who to send where. And with so many moving parts, I uh, oftentimes have gotten forgetful during one of them and didn't move somebody right, and then the AI reacts totally uh, differently than I'm used to. And sometimes I think to myself, oh... That actually seems better than it would normally if I'd just done other stuff properly. So maybe if I do something kind of like this and adjust that slightly, it will prompt them to advance in a way. But then they don't act the way I thought they would because I can't perfectly replicate and other things were bad. And so I have finally come down to this, which actually was one of my oldest strats anyway. I've realized that it's actually close to the uh, most optimal. And it gets me fairly regular finish minutes uh, times, depending on how well the battles go. Uh, on my very best ones, which were on a different category, I think I've gotten sub-10. That might also have been because of a late split, though, too, and so, I don't know exactly. Guard impacting is one of the highest level techniques in uh, Soul Calibur. One of the things that they've had consistently, and they've done some bad stuff with it in like 4 and 5, having it cost some of your super gauge and similar kinds of things. Uh, they fixed that in Soul Calibur 6, but it's one of just the classic things, and it's one of the things that a lot of amateur players like me are really bad at. And it's really absurd. It requires really precise timing to do that, so of course high level players get really good at it and it can really turn a fight. And it's really absurd that they allow low level uh, AI to do that. And that's one of the things that I say, in a way, it, it's what makes the AI in Soul Calibur good, as in able to beat you, but it's also one of the things that makes it bad, as in unfairly 
beating because of course we know that one of the strengths that AI can have that computerized uh, pre programmed uh, scripts can do is that they can uh, ultra precisely frame perfectly input thing which is you know how task works when you it, it's the same thing as the task speedrun with tool assisted you can do things frame perfectly at the same time, so any time the AI chooses, if they really want to, they can frame perfectly a uh, guard impact you. And the fact that they allow n nobody units to do that is just extremely absurd. It's one of the frustrating things about this game. Although it's not one of the most dangerous things to me because they usually don't follow up with really great uh, attacks and such. But uh, it is it is just an annoying little thing. It's actually, and the funny thing is, it's one of the ways in which the, the AI is specifically bad in this game. Although it does have very strong AIs that will be very can be very difficult to get through without uh, using exploit moves like this. There are, uh, based on just what I've seen, a lot of the uh, moves that I abuse work because the AI is frame perfectly good at missing the blocks. Like, this attack I use is not unblockable. It's all, You've already seen me block it many times. It goes to uh, all guard break, so it does leave a guard break stun, but it's not unblockable. But you'll see a lot of times I'll be going towards someone and they'll be holding block, and then I hit them, and they fall to the ground. It's because they let go of block at the same frame that I hit them, which is uh, pretty weird. I delayed that a little bit. I'm going to lose a small amount of time here unless these fights go super perfect, but oh well. Not a huge deal. Uh, I had a really rough Chronicle 9 as well in my PB, so this is another place where I can save a minute. So even if I only save 30 seconds, and since I'm still a minute ahead, I'm going to be doing pretty good. feel pretty good about it. But so yeah, there are just certain attacks. A lot of these attacks, they just frame perfectly don't block or change their position because they think it, they're not programmed to properly recognize where it comes from. I think the reason is because uh, it's a lot more prevalent than in place than in uh, Soul Calibur 2, which is also a PlayStation 2 game as well as Xbox and GameCube, and therefore should have the same like kind of hardware uh, possible malfunctions or whatever, but I think it's because of the number of weapon styles, because this game has far more weapon styles than any of the other Soul Calibur games. You have 23 base Soul Calibur characters. You have two special Soul Calibur characters uh, that are super bosses in the normal game. Your final boss, Abyss, and then your ultra super boss, Night Terror, who you can't play as, but which the AI is programmed to use. Uh, he didn't go out of bounds because he has a weapon that sometimes allows him to skip going out of bounds and that negates Ring Out, basically. And it went off there and I was actually expecting him to go out of bounds because it's it hasn't worked for him recently. I've gotten a lot of ring outs right here and I felt good about it. I thought it's going to happen again, but it didn't. He trolled me bad. But anyway, yeah, but you have those, uh, the 23 base and the two boss, special boss styles, and you have these 17 styles that were made specifically for the create assault. So with all that, it's a lot of information for the AI to parse, and they weren't properly programmed for all of them. And so there are just certain moves on many of the styles that totally... They just don't know how to work with properly. And those are what I take advantage of and abuse. So Chronicle 10, another place I can save a minute. If everything goes well. I have a uh, special strat here, which is... Another one of my pretty new strats, which is uh, kind of a bigger deal than I make it out to be. I tend to say, oh well, but it's actually almost as make or break as uh, suffering a death. I need to do this as well. Because of the, uh, even in battle, there are a bit of loading times between fights, plus the time for the fight, plus death animations. Uh, each extra fight I have to take is about 30 seconds, and... So there are these two units up here. The one uh, sitting on his horse off to the left, Oryx. He usually reliably runs forward and I don't have to worry about him. But Anaret, who's over here in this uh, stronghold off to the side, 
usually falls back to defend the center stronghold when I attack it. But through a very careful uh, sequence of commands once we're past the stronghold here, I can oftentimes... Uh, I've, I've succeeded on it about three out of four times recently. Coax her out of her stronghold into moving forward to attack my places as well, uh, which allows me to skip fighting her here and therefore saves me about half a minute. A little bit less because of the extra orders I have to give out, but... Uh, it did. Come on, come on. Now it's not going to matter. Okay, it didn't work this time. So unfortunately, since that didn't work, that's another loss of about 15 seconds from me playing around, which is pretty bad. Very unfortunate. And yeah, it's definitely 30-ish seconds for her because of uh, this particular stronghold. This has one of the more annoying missions in the game, offense down. Uh, which means that we do less damage. It's basically the same as defense up. You know, I don't know why they make it offense down instead. Most places, like, while you're in the stronghold, your defense is buffed, rather than instead, it's while you're in the stronghold, your enemy's offense is weakened. It all amounts to the same thing, but it means that we're doing chip damage. So, a, a high-level knight with a lot of hit points and already good defense with that buff on is takes on extra amount of time, so I'm probably not going to save any time now since I failed to manipulate Honoret out of there. Damuth is an extremely weak character. You might think, oh, well, he's a uh, name boss. He had a uh, cutscene. Uh, even if he looks a little funky and is using a steel fan, he should be a tough character. No, he's garbage, but uh, that's how strong it is. Just wait till you see how much damage I do to Heil who is a real boss-type character. And Anaret, uh, who uh, is a knight. Look at that chip damage. Yep. She's 10 levels lower, and it's going to take a lot longer to beat her. For the most part, the game adheres to uh, class stats for your characters, including all the Soul Calibur characters. But there are certain characters in the game, such as... Uh, Heil here, who have uh, extra good stats. He's taking even less than Anaretta, even though he's... Uh, well, he is 11 levels higher, but even so, he's a, a class that is less defensively. I believe he's a gladiator. I should have looked at it and said it. I almost messed things up. I'm pressing only two buttons to do this, my L1 and my R1. It would normally be A plus K and then hold B plus K, uh, which are not normal buttons. Uh, defaults assigned. You have to press square and circle at the same time and then triangle and circle at the same time. But because I use them so much on both this move and other moves, I uh, adjusted my... I customized my uh, controller setup so that I can easily do that with press of shoulder buttons. As well, right? Okay, so that's that. Now we have the really tough battles coming up. I need to find whoever is the lowest level defend so they can get a swath of experience. Okay, 13-6 to FIFA easily. And then Elia Duel. Now, I mentioned before squares, only five units can fit into a square, so even though there are a total of eight units coming, as soon as these five are here, I automatically start the uh, battle so that I can get them out of the way and move on to the next, uh, move on to the next fight. Because otherwise they would just stand behind and wait. They can't enter the square bordering the castle so they can't attack it. You can fight more than five characters at once, but they have to come from multiple directions because of that five square limit. Battle 2, fight! How 
does she stay in? There are a lot of jumping attacks in the 17 Creator Soul styles, so it's very easy to ring yourself out on some of these maps. It's always, I find it hilarious to ring myself out after winning. Only one unit can ever uh, fall out of the ring regardless, and you lose, you permanently uh, stop taking damage in that fight once you've won. It is possible to get draws if you and your opponent hit each other on the exact same frame, but it is utterly impossible for you to both fall out of the ring on the same frame. I have gone out simultaneously with my opponent uh, many times, and usually I'm the one hit by the ring out. Because they reasoned that I went out just a pixel before, or just a frame before, however they calculate it. Draws, by the way, are the worst thing that can happen in the Chronicle, because you get experience as if you lost, but the enemy is eliminated, so you don't get... Uh, full experience for them. And again, experience isn't... Uh, and you still lose your character as well, so... I'd rather lose and be able to beat them with the next character. It would technically be a little bit slower, but uh, sometimes... depending on the character. But it's super bad anyway if it's against a character that's not worth a lot of experience. It would be hilarious, but impossible on something like, say, uh, the Gerardo fight, for instance. It kind of makes me wonder what would happen if it were to happen. I guess it's potentially uh, possible if he kills me with an attack that kills him, too, since it costs the health as soon as uh, it goes off. Although, uh... All right. I have to wait until uh, they are in position and swinging before they will count as part of the combat, which is one of the reasons why uh, when I do my initial commands to prevent the enemy from uh, attacking me, they go, you know, to, or to prevent losing commands by only having one character in combat, I'm able to do it just off a couple of uh, a second and a half or so and not longer waiting. She was already considered out. Some of them, they go out... Some of these maps, of course, like this one, they go out quite easily. Other times, it takes a bit of a push-shove to get them over the edge. Sometimes they don't properly anyway. Battle two, fight. Fight. Knockout. There are actually some weapons that have a property that auto-guard impacts as well. Weapons in the game, uh, this is more Soul Calibur based than RPG Lite based, but uh, in it's, it's something that's uh, pretty consistent in Soul Calibur, in that uh, weapons have properties. Your base weapons, your default weapons for uh, most of the characters, uh, as well as the very first weapons you obtain for each style, have no properties to them. So they fight, you know, the way a normal fighting game would be. Everybody's certain moves do a certain amount of damage, etc., etc. Uh, but other weapons have at least two and as many as four properties that change them. Some of them are defense up or attack up, kind of basic stuff. Some are life regeneration. Some are weird things like this sometimes prevents you from... Uh, getting a ring out. This sometimes negates counter attacks and turns or counter hits and turns them into normal hits so you don't take the extra damage in the follow up. Uh, this sometimes causes your guards to turn into guard impacts. This sometimes causes your hits to cause a guard impact uh, stun. 
when they block. So little things like that. One of the reasons that I use the styles that I do is that the weapons are especially powerful. The reason that, uh, one of the reasons, at least, that shang Wa's spin to win does so much damage is because with Soul Calibur, I get a huge, uh, like a 30% strength increase. So doing 30% more damage with an attack that already is pretty high damaging. Uh, which is one of the highest in the entire game. And the Mirasame has uh, nearly equal power as well as a huge life reach. You may have noticed it already at work uh, on one or more of my guys. It uh, also actually has a negative uh, thing, which uh, many many of them have one negative. No more than none of them ever have more than one. And all the ones that have negative properties have at least uh, three properties total, so at least two good properties. Uh, in that it drains my health constantly. You notice that I'm uh, they're not at full health because their health is already ticked down, the ones who fought. Tifa was inside the castle, so she didn't, but Meliodul's last fight was out of bounds, so uh, her health is less than max. But you, it gives back a huge amount of health uh, in damage. It's vampiric in that fashion, so... And now we see the instigator of this whole thing and uh, hear from his lips what happened here exactly. All right, all right. <laughs> Surprised? Well, it's just as you see. I must protect this country. I have this brilliant plan of pitting Grandal and Dalkia against one another and then rise to power during the resulting chaos. But because of your unexpected meddling, my plan is in ruins. You will pay dearly for this. Battle one, fight! <laughs> Missing out on the, uh... I'm sorry, but I must move on. Missing out on the, uh, Anaretta skip is a bit rough, but, uh... At least, uh... This isn't that much, uh... This is still, well, it's about the same as my PB, so... Not super horrible. One second worse than my PB. Uh, all right, so now back to Dalkia. What about Abilia? We rush back to Dalkia to see how she's doing. Well, she's been stonewalled by uh, Glesser Pemdo, and they're all in a nice little line here. Now, imagine this. Her dialogue suggests that they uh, possibly just got here or whatever, but... Uh, Considering that they were the ones who fought me in Maletta as well, and this is what stonewalled her, they would have theoretically, you know, did they just leave these uh, strongholds totally empty and she couldn't take them while they were running off and then they found a backpass in or whatever? It just uh, doesn't make a lot of sense, but I find it hilarious to think that she's been stonewalled by empty uh, strongholds and then allowed them to come back and get back in them. Each of the Klesser Pemdo are supposed to be elemental related. Uh, and so Loopy is fire, and so both her, uh, her mission and her background, you know, the the uh, battle map that we fight on, whatever whatever you call this, I can't remember what they're called now, the uh, stage, are fire based. So yes, burning building. Her weapons fire on it because it's all unblockable, similar to what we've seen. As well as Blast, which you've noticed the sparkles on my character, perhaps. That meant that uh, if I were hit by a knockback, I would be knocked back quite a bit more. It's kind of a weird thing. It doesn't always work properly. Uh, some of the hits do definitely knock you back. Some just seem to do extra damage instead and have a weird effect. That you see. But uh, you don't really see it at all in the speedrun because I never get hit by anybody who, in a Blast. You only see it twice and they're weak enemies. But uh, things are about to get worse. Heal Doe is on Sacred Field, which is a combination of Ice and, and Cure. Cure, of course, restoring health over time. We've seen that one before. Uh, that's kind of minor, sort of annoying. The Ice is bad. Luckily, it's the last time we'll see Ice in the game. Heal Doe can, is generally pretty easy. 
This spot is where she's bad. Yesterday when I was playing, this was where my PB chance really died because she decided to kill me, which just totally ruined uh, this chronicle. This is already a tough one, and losing before AG is devastating. Battle one, fight! She's being hind today. Luckily, she decided to be the good heel though and do absolutely nothing and just watch as I skated around on the ice. Even though I had a couple of slip-ups in my command, it was still okay. So yeah, Sacred Field, she's water, of course, which uh, is very much shown by the type of it, it all fits together pretty well in a uh, water theme for her. The name of her swords is Leviathan, and the name of her style is Wave Sword, so they're already good. Holy Wings is uh, Eloa, and Eloa is uh, Wind, the Wind of Creation. So this is Whirlwind, like we experienced before. It's very powerful, so uh, it potentially can be bad because the Whirlwind can actually push us far away from her so that our follow-ups to... Uh, our spin to win have a good chance of not connecting, which can make the fight a little tricky. Luckily, her AI is really horrible. The other effect added to it is Aerial Wind, which means if she hits us with an attack that would knock us up into the air, it we would go floating high like a feather before coming down, which would be potentially bad. But uh, she almost, her weapon style has almost no attacks that even do that. And she almost never uses the ones she does have, so... You never see Aerial Wind. It's the only place in the game where we ever fight anybody in Aerial Wind. There's one other place where you see Aerial Wind alone in the game in Chronicle 19. But we don't fight that battle in a normal speedrun because it's the super optional, super duper boss, level 99N. I do that occasionally as a, a donation incentive for marathons, but uh, you never do it in a real run because it's just a waste of time. You know, it, it's off the beaten path and not necessary to actually win the game. But I think it makes a great uh, donation incentive because people who played this casually and tried to fight end would usually get totally pwned. But uh, my strategies are pretty much fail foolproof. Except against characters like this. AG is in Impregnable, which is Quake, which we haven't really seen yet. Uh, we could have, but I skipped it. And Guardian Force. Quake is kind of annoying. Every three seconds the ground shakes and you're stunned unless you're down crouching or you're in the middle of another action like flying in the air, uh, jumping, you know, or something, or doing an aerial type attack. But much worse, Guardian Force means that she doesn't react to anything. And you're about to see that in action. She doesn't get stunned by blocking. She doesn't get stunned by taking damage. She just uh, totally ignores it and continues her own attacks, which allows me to die while she... To do whatever she wants. Luckily, her stats are pretty lousy for a super boss comparison, at least, and uh, she damages herself with her weapon. You can see her life shaving down every time she attacks. But, uh... Am I actually going to beat her with one character? Yes! I beat her with one character. That's amazing. That almost never happens. That was a pretty good warm -up fight. Wow. I can't believe I actually did it. This is, uh, this is now possibly to earn a run. Wow. I think that has only ever happened to me once before, and it almost guarantees that this is a gold, because uh, just the time save. All right, so yeah, it's really horrible to have to do that. Luckily, again, her stats are trash, so I can fight through her, and that's the power of uh, katana and swords there. I've tried various things. The one thing that does affect her is if you can get an attack throw off. The most well-known and famous of these is if you use the chain sickle uh, create a soul style. There, if you press A plus B, you swing it around head height, and if it connects at a certain distance, it leads to an attack throw where you wrap around them, pull them in, and then bump them with your shoulder for additional damage. And so you can use that on her, but it's uh, still really hard to set up since she can just 
swing through you and, and such. You can't set her up in any way, and the quake's going off all the time. And it takes time to pause and switch weapons, so generally I've just found it not worth it to go for. I've tried it before, but again, it's just not reliable, so I, I've come to uh, so ignore it. Come. Just this stick to the katana. Because like the other thing about it is, even if you... I've tried a couple of other types of attack throws too, but they just don't do enough consistent damage to be worth it. Doing the aerial attack that I uh, demonstrated there is generally the semi-safest while being most consistent damage. You've got to have consistent damage for it to be a worthwhile strat in this sense it is a speed run. And so even if it's kind of helping to shut her down to keep you from taking less damage, if you're not doing damage fast yourself, it doesn't help any. So that's the end of Luna. That was our final fight with her. She had Soul Calibur. If you're familiar with the uh, Soul Calibur universe and lore and everything, well, what's she doing with Soul Calibur? We don't know. She somehow acquired it. Uh, does that mean Soul Edge is out there somewhere? Spoiler, yes. We will see that, too. It's never really explained uh, what they're doing other than being part of the Soul Calibur lore, but... Boom. Nice, 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 nice gold. Okay, this difficult one. Okay, who do I want there? Lena will be at one, everybody else at four. This is another one that is just uh, so big with so much stuff going on. I've tried a couple of different strats for it multiple times and I've kind of settled on this it's a really weird map because as you can see I have three stronghold starting which isn't unusual compared to all of theirs but between there is an enemy stronghold between each of my side strongholds which just means that it's the angles the enemy can come at me at is any direction it's really weird and I have to go through many in order to get to them uh, and there are a lot of enemies that are charging forward towards me. So... I have to defend my main stronghold. Because with as many enemies as are attacking it, if I ignore it, or ignore the people going after it, they will definitely uh, take it, and then I lose, and I have to restart. I would prefer not to fight them, but it's pretty much impossible. You have to fight them all because of how aggressive they are running towards the middle and how much uh, room they have. Very rude. I used to always use my main character uh, just because, but the problem is my main character ended up dying because these are all very high level, very strong, unique characters uh, with very aggressive AI. And trying to fight five or six of them uh, that are attacking my stronghold would inevitably lead to my death. And then before I would respawn to defend it again, they would finish taking it. And then I realized, wait, it's not uh, as, you know, it's generally not as fast, but using a sword master is safer because of all the life drain you get. So I went to doing that and I haven't had any problems with that since. The real trouble is just trying to figure out uh, what roads I can... I can take several different roads that are all pretty much the same length to try and get to the enemy and which ones I choose determine how they attack me and just try and figure out the fastest one there is a little bit tricky. I'd actually be faster to go on the side slightly. Maybe I should make that adjustment and see what happens. Leads to more attacking me there, but... Now, if this is going to be consistent, the guy on the left is actually going to retreat, but these two on the right have nowhere else to go, so they're going to run up in here. Lag. Oh, now he's gone forward. That's fine. Battle one, fight! You're 
Battle two, fight! There we go. This is one of the slightly trickier areas to get ring outs with. Okay, annoying Kierk is still. Just because of the number of fights, this is one that has a uh, actually pretty wide variety uh, variance in the possible time just from how the fights go. Which uh, has made figuring out... It's one, it's one of the things that's made figuring out uh, whether something is more time efficient or not harder because... Uh, Considering uh, how little work I've put into specific kinds of strats, kind of surprising. Uh, it, it's kind of surprising how little work I put into uh, specific strats, especially Chronicle by Chronicle. Considering how much time I put into this uh, speed run as a whole. Hard to say. So hard to say. Oh, blessed. That's a 15-ish uh, second time loss by not sending her out as soon as possible. Forgot that she was inside the place. I wish she inside the place and the others weren't. Oh, this is... No, that was Tifa. Is she attacking yet? No, now is. Two characters off to left and right or two more of the Soul Calibur characters, Raphael and Cervantes. A lot of times I... Spend a lot of time pointing them out. I haven't bothered the last couple times. I do have them enough when I do SC present. So, tend not to worry about it. Battle one, fight! Did I do it again? You killed me! Did I do it again? There we go. I don't know, did you do it? All right, so no, you do. Yep, no, you do. That'll be fine. Luckily, my PB for this was pretty bad, so I have another thirty seconds I can save on this chronicle. And it's about this point that the Chronicles start to uh, definitely drag a little with the amount of uh, strongholds you have to take. Definitely the slowest portion of the game. Increasing the... Uh, being able to increase the time flow here would be one of the uh, cool quality of life things you could update in this game.
I would very much love to see a Soul Calibur 3 remastered for PlayStation Store and Xbox Store. Me specifically PlayStation. Even for Steam, although Namco hasn't put anything but Soul Calibur 6 on Steam. At least among the Soul Calibur games. Final battle. Kind of surprised with the positive possible lucrativeness of it. They don't add, like, Soul port Soul Calibur 2 remastered and Soul Calibur 1 remastered to the, uh, the Steam store. Because I think they did quite well when they came out uh, for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. My wish list from Namco is three items. Uh, Soul Calibur 3 Remastered. Uh, Soul Calibur 7 with a new Chronicles of the Sword mode. Libra of Souls is okay, but Chronicles of the Sword is so much better. And finally, uh, a Chronicles of the Sword standalone game. They probably wouldn't do both Chronicles of the Sword and Soul Calibur 7 and a Chronicles... Uh, standalone game, but I would take either one. Updated Chronicles with, especially with the new updated Create a Soul functions, you could if you made it specifically, you know, standalone, you could have take these styles that they use and then upgrade them to uh, be much more you know, new and realistic things. Add a few more sorcery style abilities, which are really cool all the time and uh, stuff like that. Or even make it the ultimate for custom and Bring in every possible style that any character has used thus far. You know, with some obvious exceptions like Spawn, uh, Spawn the Jedi, uh, or you know, Star Wars characters. Other guest characters probably would be difficult to use those specifically, but you could still use the types of them in a couple of different ways. They reuse like some of Spawn stuff, I think. For uh, I think they were saying they reuse some of Spawn's moves for. Um, what's his name in Soul Calibur 6? Uh, oh, wonderful dramatic villain. I can't remember his name now. It's been too long since I've been playing around with Soul Calibur 6, really. Although, uh, the new thing with Haomaru is, uh, Haomaru of Samurai Showdown is coming, either, it dropped either today or is dropping tomorrow. Did it drop today? Oh yeah, I don't have it. Fine. Let's look at that. Okay, final battle against Dalkia. Queen Aurelia is pretty disappointing for a final boss of a faction. Uh, although really, Chester wasn't too much better, the instigator behind everything in Moletta. Demuth, of course, was the king, but he also wasn't the final boss in the place. And and yes, you know, the queen, especially of this nation, doesn't necessarily have to be the best fighter, but considering she gets a cutscene and everything and is the uh, special guest character for the non-Chronicles moves, if you want the default sickle user, she should be a little bit tougher than uh, she is. Anybody can do anything, but the only time I've ever died to her is when I was already almost dead coming in. Worthless servant of strife. You shall pay with your blood. Also, Luna just told us the exact same thing she did. So you've come. They really like that line, uh, the writers, for this game. We'll see it one more time, too. That's the attack that can go into an attack throw. That's how weak she is. Yes, she went totally all out. She did everything she possibly could, and I still just utterly smote her because uh, she is so weak. All I needed was three good hits. Some boss. Ah. Uncle clear. Not the best, but uh, better than my PB, which is all that matters. Okay, so a year has passed, 
And General Gerardo has retired. No, not exactly retired. In fact, he has... Uh, he's risen up in rebellion. He's uh, declared that he's going to overthrow Strife uh, or something. They don't say specifically why he is. But he's rebelling against uh, Emperor Strife. And so we have been appointed commander of the anti-rebel force. We're essentially, you know, the big commander in the army now after our glorious victories over every other nation on the continent. We have no enemies left now, except for Gerardo. Maybe he just got so bored of not having anyone to fight, he decided that uh, he had to fight himself. Maybe that's the reason? We don't know. But even though he is our beloved father figure, again, because this is their basic kind of JRPG style thing where you don't get to make any moral decisions yourself, they're all determined for you. We decide, ah, well, we don't like it, but I guess we have to fight Gerardo. Uh, Abelia is our second in command, and she is totally lawful stupid. That's the order, and I will kill anyone the Emperor says. If anyone goes against the Emperor, they're going against Grandal, and therefore they're my enemy, even if it's General Gerardo, even if it's you, if you turn. Uh, similar stuff. So, yeah. Uh, in other news that doesn't affect the speedrun, all of the characters we had, some of which are actually kind of useful if you use them casually, got taken away from us, except for Abelia. We have no more knights with lances, we have no more mega samurai with the katana sword. Uh, luckily, since we use all custom characters, we get to keep your custom characters no matter what. But uh, all of our previous troops were taken away and replaced with some really crappy replacements, for the most part. Athena, an assassin with kunai, is pretty strong, and kunai is a good and useful skill. But the other two are a dagger user and a steel fan user, and those are two of the worst weapons. People playing casually like the dagger. You can throw bombs and they're okay, but other than the throwing the bombs ability, the dagger is useless. It has no good, no good attacks. It's not really... It's not strong at all. It's kind of a faster weapon, but it's not as fast as good fast weapons like Talim, uh, Taki, and... Uh, even the kunai, you know, style I was just talking about. Those are all better by far than the dagger. Because the dagger just has the silly, a couple of moves that use the silly bombs, which are strong, but, you know, not that strong. Uh, again, though, it's a speedrun, so we don't care. Uh, instead, the only thing we care about in this match is that we're down to four characters, which is really annoying. Uh, not only does it make it less safe for us, but just having less characters, uh, as we will in three of the next four Chronicles, including this one. Not having max number of characters means that the battles are... Uh, not the battles specifically, but the Chronicles, at least, are longer than they should be because we have one less person, or in one case, two less people, hitting the buildings and dealing damage to them, which artificially inflates their time and is rather annoying. Battle one, fight! For the most part, uh, the rebels are not very intimidating, luckily. The last intimidating fights we had were back in... Other than, you know, certain boss fights like the Cluster Pendo and everything, they were last, you know, just like regular named people who were intimidating. We're all the way back in Chronicle 10. But the boss here is a uh, another matter. I don't even care who it is. Rydia is fine. Although it's kind of bad to be Rydia, I probably should use somebody else because I'm taking a bit of damage. Waiting for these three. So I can fight all three of them at the same time. I might have gone a little bit early, but I hope I didn't. Two, battle one. Ninja Maid, shout outs to Ninja Maids. Goodbye, Ninja Maid. Press F, pay respects. Battle 2, fight! Some of the uh, attacks. Attacks have three levels in Soul Calibur. If you played the games at all, you're familiar with it, any of them. There's high, mid, and low. And again, because this uh, spitting crouch. Because of how it goes, uh, I'm, I'm considered crouching. When you're crouching, you can't get hit by high attacks. And some attacks count as high that definitely, you know, are kind of going high. But it looked like that sword probably should have gotten me. But, uh, you know, luckily game goes over rules of hit locations rather than actual physical location of uh, models. 
it does a pretty good job for the most part of uh, making it work right, of course, by uh, for range and everything. But uh, there are certain moments where the uh, rules take priority over the model, and that's one of those cases, and it's kind of funny. It looked a little weird to me. I don't know if anyone else saw that. Anyway, that's uh, it for this one, luckily. We only have one fight left. It's a really annoying fight, though. Brunhild is a Lancer, and the building we have is Separate. Now, we have dealt with a, a previous mission that at Glue that pulls us towards the enemy, and can be kind of annoying, but generally it's not all that bad because we like to be close to the enemy anyway. Uh, just as long as I can get my spins off, we're all good. But Separate, because it pushes me away, it can prevent my... Uh, spin follow-ups from hitting unless we're very close to the edge or if she gets up towards me So it's pretty much entirely the AI's decision if I can keep up my uh, combos Which makes the fight really annoying and potentially dangerous because the fewer the more time I do not have a stun lock combo going the more opportunities she has with her very long weapon to poke me and uh, do damage to me Plus, you know, the only way you can really get close is by running towards her, which leaves you perfectly vulnerable to get hit by her as uh, she has you approaching. Separate is a really, really unfair uh, mission. I would rather have it than ice, I think, but just barely. Otherwise, there are five units I've left in the dust, which is a pretty nice amount, not counting the three Soul Calibur characters. Yes, first time we have to fight three Soul Calibur characters, we only get four. The next time we have to fight three Soul Calibur characters, we'll only have three. I... that's kind of one of the things I just ran about a lot that I'm so frustrated by. Decisive battle. Wee, look at me get pushed away. Oh, that was pretty nice. That was a pretty darn nice fight. It looks like I won today, but who knows what'll happen next time. I don't think this will quite be a goal, but it'll be close. One of the very nice things about that opening move that I use is that it sidesteps. I think I have mentioned that uh, already tonight, but since it pushes me, uh, it lets me slip to the side when I activate it. It avoids a lot of uh, mid attacks that would normally be used against a uh, runner. And yes, it was a very minor gold. Nice, nice, nice. So now we're attacked by rebels in the middle of the night. Uh, this is the first mission, but not the last, where losing my main character will actually result in an automatic uh, defeat. Luckily, this is the easiest collection of characters uh, in the game, including the easiest boss, yes, even easier than Aurelia. So my odds of being uh, my main character being defeated are really low, as long as I avoid the Soul Calibur characters, which of course we're doing because this is only any percent. Uh, it actually can look very thrilling, because the strategy I use uh, seems to put my capital in great potential of uh, being taken. But because the stats of the enemy are so bad, they do actually less damage than they than a normal infantry should. You know, even infantry, which are already about the second worst uh, building hitters. So, uh, you know, whatever. And we only have to make it through three pretty weak strongholds in order to, uh, including the final one. That was actually a quake, but all we got was three because uh, these are pretty wimpy guys. Occasionally, they will still do hero stuff, but their stats are so bad that even at their most hero, it's almost impossible to lose. Still, I should definitely uh, limit the amount of fights my main character gets into here, which I generally...
I shouldn't have had my main character going forward first, but I was going on speed. Yeah, she is going to be the one taking hits. That's kind of bad. Who is lowest level now? Lena is still lowest level. Normally, of course, I prefer to have my characters uh, waiting so I don't have to give multiple orders, but the uh, main reason I'm doing this here is it actually does make a small difference in preventing me from losing and in, in taking the enemy stronghold before I lose mine. The small amount of distance I move forward here uh, gives the edge in being able to do that first. I still want to wait for them all, so I only have to load up one attack. One, fight. Otherwise, I don't really care. Good thing I'm three minutes ahead now, because this is the start. Most of these uh, Chronicles going forward I have, except for, I think, 18, I have pretty darn good times on. So I'm. Uh, it's going to be very hard for me to make up any more time over the next hour. Despite having a bit of trouble in the early game, being three minutes ahead by this point is close to what I was really hoping for, though. I could be close to five minutes ahead by this time already if I did a little bit better in some of the early, early times, but I'll take it. Being three minutes ahead now is quite nice. That was very accidental. Don't uh, don't think that that was a super awesome play by me. That was entirely accidental uh, guard impact. My hand slipped. I'll take you anytime you want. Okay, and nope, actually works better with... Okay. One of the hardest skills in this game is actually at manipulating your characters along the paths properly. All right, and that's the last order I have to give here. Now I can almost just set the controller down for a little while. Oh no, they're gonna get me. Nope, they're too slow. This will actually be sub two hour, I think. Unless I mess up, which I think I'm going to go ahead and do a small little safety thing just because I'm so far ahead. I don't want to risk losing this to a random, random bit of just absolutely the boss deciding today is the day to ruin my life. So because of that, we won't get to see how close the race is on the enemies uh, attacking my stronghold, but that's okay. My timing is so excellent. Decisive battle. Although I say things like that, I get all puffed up and everything, and now it's going to go absolutely terrible when uh, a later on point. Hubris and all that, pride goeth before the fall. Fate. Or, more uh, correctly, pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before the fall. Come on, stop blocking. Seriously? Okay. 
Zwignus decided to ruin my chance at another fabulous gold, so I'm going to lose a little bit of time, but uh, this is still going to be easily sub two hours, finally. Feels good, man. Okay. Still just about three minutes ahead. Not bad. Now I have actually a decent amount of time I can make up over the next couple strongholds if things go not super poorly. Messed up slightly already. Not a big deal. Messing up more uh, thinking about it. I mostly got it now, but this still feels like one of the uh, most stressful chronicles in the run because of how many times I've tried to do some extra fast strats that have blown up in my face. Okay. I'm losing a tiny amount of time with all that mess up, like 5 to 10 seconds. Not super duper bad. Alright, now I fortify this up to prevent this cavalry from attacking my, uh, stronghold for quite some time. Now I don't have to give any more orders to those four for the rest of this uh, chronicle. They are fine. Meliodul is the only one I have to worry about. Excellent. Just in time. Fortify this up to three to uh, give it as many hit points as possible. And now... Absolutely certain both are attacking, or else everything is ruined. Take those two out. And even though they're cavalry, the damage uh, does add up fast. Getting rid of them here will delay the amount of damage that my stronghold takes for another good little while. Battle one. Good hit there. He's not quite dead. But that was quickly solved. The final battle fight. He had a few more hit points, but he still will die to one shoulder charge. Okay, two good, two good fights there. Listen, I just can't afford to Having two really good fights there can uh, pretty much make up for the. Uh, clumsy beginning of this. Now that's the final command given, and now I don't do anything more than press a few confirm buttons the rest of the time.
because I'm paranoid, make sure, okay, all my guys are forward. It's so close. One of the reasons why this strat is so important to me and uh, why I is because it took a long time in the making. As I mentioned before, there are a couple of extra characters that will join you under certain circumstances if you defeat them. And a couple of them are in this mission. Only one will. Uh, the same thing happened way back in Chronicle 2 the first time we fought Gerardo. Uh, there are two of his units where if you fight them, they will join your party at a later period and have a small amount of dialogue. Uh, they were the guys who were running off on the side, so I always skip them so I don't get them in my party, which is good for the speedrun because that's extra dialogue skip. There are two more here who have a specially uh, long dialogue in the next section. No wonder I can dig this. They only do three damage. They should be doing four if they're extra weak. Good. Uh, the But the... Uh, But of the people who will join me here, there are two others, and only one will join you. It's whichever one you defeat first. If you don't defeat either one, neither one will join you. But uh, when they join in the next Chronicle, they have a huge amount of dialogue, which takes, like, even as fast as I speed through the dialogue, it's like 10 seconds worth. So not fighting them is a huge time save, not just here, but in the next section as well. And it's in the uh, next one. And on my PB, actually, I did not properly do this strat. I forgot to fortify the uh, northern stronghold where the cavalry were attacking, and so I had to fight them and defeat them instead to prevent them from taking my stronghold, because you saw how close that was. Without fortifying both of those and getting rid of the two guys that I do, they will take my stronghold before I take theirs. Now, the final battle against Gerardo is one of the worst fights in the entire game because he has Guardian Force. Uh, which we saw back in Chronicle 11. No Quake this time, but uh, he still has the biggest stats. But dying only once to him is huge. I've never beaten him ever with a single character. Which makes him essentially the hardest fight in the game. It's, it's uh, kind of hard to say. Now, theoretically, Strife is definitely the hardest fight in the game. He has some of the best stats and stuff. But... Uh, This was starting to go well, and now it's going awful. I haven't done hardly any damage to him. And there my life just ran out because of this weapon, unfortunately. So I've never beaten him with a single character. I've always lost at least once. Uh, once is fantastic. Two is average. I only lost once on my PB, which is my time, which is why my time is not better considering the two extra fights I had to do. Throws are the very worst thing he can do. But it's hard to say uh, which is worse between your and strife because since I can't guaranteed win with one character because of how he has the worst effect in the game, even though his stats aren't as dominatingly overpowered. Nor is his weapon, since he damages himself. But still, the ability to be unaffected by anything is pretty huge. One of the reasons I like that attack, though, is because of how many whiffs he gets uh, trying to hit me with it. Rows are bad, though, because uh, they don't count as draining his health, and mine drains the entire time. I might... Nope, likely not. He's especially doing that. Okay, two down, which is unfortunate. I'm not going to have the best time here, but uh, should still be comparable to my PB, so... I only lost once on my PB, I think it was a great thing, but because of the extra fights, it came out as pretty average now. It would have been really good for my old strat before I started doing this, and now I've gotten sense a nearly sub-10. Which was really incredible. This is the longest cutscene in the game by a pretty wide margin, which is why, even though I'm... More than a minute from my uh, gold split. Well, right not now. anymore, but when I started, it was a little gold split, but I'm not going to get anywhere close to gold. As dying Gerardo appeals to us to uh, think about our purpose, even though we know almost nothing about the Emperor's ways. 
You must learn to control that strength yourself. Otherwise, you will never become a true warrior. Delayed death sound. Holy cow, Emperor Strife has Soul Edge and he just killed Gerardo with it. What do we think about this? We are very sad. Death animations take so long. And now Abilia, the rest of our uh, forces are like, man, we're really sad about this, dot, dot, dot. And Abilia's like, eh, that's done, time to go home. Totally unfeeling. But we decide, you know, we've just been slaughtering all the rebels, but now we feel bad because General Gerardo died, so now we're going to take command of the rebels ourselves, and we are going to strike down General Gerardo. So we are no longer Grandal, now we are uh, Arthias, not to be confused with Arthas, who's somebody else with another big thing, and I forgot I have only two characters and a wait time going into the shop. Oh, God, I am losing about 30 seconds doing that. That is awful. It's something I do on occasion, though I get too much in it. This chronicle is the worst chronicle in the game because you only get three characters. And as deep in the thing as it is, and as big as it is, this has no business giving us three characters. I find it incredible that my PB is my gold time considering that... Uh, well, it's just how perfectly it went. And even in the last couple ones I've done, I haven't been able to make it go as perfectly because of little mess ups like that. That just about uh, lost all the time that I saved by doing the, uh, the, what should I call it? The Feofan Rudiger skip. Since I didn't have to fight Feofan or Rudiger in the previous Stronghold, uh, previous Chronicle, I don't have to have their dialogue from them joining where they tell us that they're very suspicious of us suddenly saying we're for the rebels after we, you know, we're responsible for General Gerardo's death, which is totally reasonable. It's, uh, some of my viewers have commented on that before. They're like, wait, 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 you're saying that uh, suddenly we've decided we've been killing the rebels for the past three missions. Now all of a sudden we've decided we want to join them, even though we were winning. Yeah. Yeah. That is basically it. No, no good reason. We don't make the moral decisions ourselves. They're made for us. Boom. But theoretically, I should be able to get a sub-14 minute on this Chronicles someday. If I don't mess things up by going into the shop. And I do 15 properly. Also, again, the frame perfectness in this game is really absurd. I When I got hit by him, I did not release a, a damage sound. My character released the How Rude line. Which she only does when her attack goes off. So he frame perfectly hit me before my attack could land. And... That is not, like, amazing chance. The AI does that all the time. It's just, again, that's the worst RNG in this game, is the AI literally, more than any other game, just decides whether you're going to win or not. And it's not a matter of rolling dice or whatever, like, like it would be normally, you know. It's like, well, we have a 75% chance to hit, and that means that, you know, it's always going to fail. It's just the AI decides whether it is going to be unstoppable or what and totally unfair or if it's going to allow you to do the things that you can do to speak through so this painful chronicle also introduces us to a lot of uh high difficulty enemies start to fight the Grandal Elite, who are levels 40 and higher. They don't specifically have that name, but that's what I refer to them. They're named characters, which, you know, are the same kinds of elite characters. A uh, unique appearance, unique name, usually a more advanced weapon. We've been fighting those since the uh, beginning. But uh, this time, they are much higher level, high 40s. Uh, we'll be fighting in a couple things, both... Uh, a lot of other named soldiers from other sources, such as Abelia and her uh, special units, that the same ones she had back in Chronicle 2, or Chronicle 1, rather, as well as uh, the former units that we used to have in our party, are fairly high level as well, mid-30s now, uh, maybe low-40s. But 
again, not high 40s, low 50s. No, extremely high level stuff. Also, uh, extremely high stats and aggressive AIs. They're just definitely a cut above forces you've been fighting thus far and kind of, sort of, talked about in the story, but not really. Battle one, fight. Just at the end of this, our, our, uh, our fellow soldiers, the units under our command, you know, who do our speaking for us because we are a silent protagonist. We say one word over the course of the entire game. Uh, they note that the defenses are much stronger than they should have been, uh, considering that we just, you know, defeated all the rebels. It's like they were ready for our, uh, for our advance. And in fact, after uh, this chronicle's over, one of our characters figures out, wait a minute, I was suspicious way back then, and she did have comments about it back in Chronicle 14. We were attacked in the middle of the night by rebels. They suddenly surrounded us. Well, they weren't. They were Grandal soldiers uh, who were disguised as rebels and were trying to assassinate us on the generals, on the uh, emperor's orders, which is why they knew all of the newest uh, ways to get in. They don't go into detail about that, of course, but uh, they did do a decent job of talking about how much they arose out of nowhere that you can kind of infer a lot from it about the uh okay good yeah this will work and i can our one but you can infer that you know since they were part of the regular grand Ole army when a rebellion rises up from one of the major generals all the kinds of things that you would do for military intelligence and security such as changing code words and such things uh yeah passwords, ciphers, all that kind of intelligence portion of uh, the military, you'd have to change all that, or else, you know, the enemy could easily waltz in and get anything. But even so, the rebels were able to bypass all that to get close to us. Here's our first of those elites. Elon is much tougher not than even a level 48 monk should be. Way tougher, both in stats and in AI. For one thing, she's actually able to block the attack three times. Even though it's, once they start blocking, they'll usually block several times in a row, and it may seem like it's counterproductive to just keep doing it, but it's still safer. They will eventually stop, as she did, so it's still safer to do that than it is to uh, try to come up with some other strategy to throw them off. Uh, I've only had the one loss the entire game, though, which is why I'm ahead three minutes, at the, so that's nice. Now, if the rest of this goes well and I don't get any uh, defeats, I might get close to that 14-minute mark if I don't lose too much more time so I can still be close to three minutes ahead. From here on out, I don't have a lot of uh, time left that I can win, that I can gain, so... probably could have totally waited so I didn't have to give the commands as well but whatever it's it's enough distance and a few enough people that I'm commanding that it kind of washes out one, battle one fight Did I do This Chronicle is even worse on SC percent. It's already annoying on any percent only having three people just takes so long. But it's even worse on SC percent because I have to take on uh, three Soul Calibur characters with only three of my own characters. Uh, including two in one place, both uh, Talim and Yun Sung in a Whirlwind, which is the second worst Soul Calibur place next to uh, Ice, which we'd be fighting Sung Mina on in Chronicle 10. And that's the overall worst. Uh, based on the amount of people I now even so that just Sung Min on the ice is even worse than that. She really is. Casually, uh, when you're first learning and everything, it's it's even worse than Sung Min on the ice because oh, all the way. Not too. 
since you only have three people. With five people, you throw all the bodies at Sung Mina with uh, just little side swipes. You can usually kill one person. Per but trying to beat both Talim and Yun Sung when you only have three bodies to potentially lose is really, really rough casually. I am not sure. It's been so long I can't remember. Generally, when I played the game casually, I tried to 100% everything. Every stronghold, every enemy. Uh, and I even beat, you know, like the Swordmaster end every single time. Eventually, I could overwhelm him with my five characters. I think there were a couple times I decided to skip Yun Sung and Talim just because they are so hard. Casually, when you don't have uh, super abusive strats. The Whirlwind even throws off the super abusive strats, but they can still do it. But they make any of your regular kind of moves you want to use almost null and void because of how you get pushed around. But again, we're not fighting them, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I would like to mention this unique one, Down Lose with Zossal Mel, is one of the funniest and most fun. Uh, some people say it's the worst because he can literally one-shot you. If you fall down, if you get knocked down and fall on your back, you get shot up into the air like by a, you are hit by a bomb and you lose. You lose all your health and that's it. But it affects him as well. So he's actually very vulnerable to the shoulder charge. Uh, so I'm not really worried about him. He's never much of a problem. He's, he's just fun, but casually, yeah, if you aren't prepared for his aggressiveness and his moves that he uses, he can take you out pretty darn quickly. This is another separate, and with two characters here, it's pretty bad. I actually almost feel that I should have pulled my main character back because shoulder charge is slightly more effective. Battle one. That went well. You should really give up. This is actually totally brand new. I did it both against Brunhild and here. Normally, I just fall into the rhythm of, oh, I knocked her down immediately, go into spin to win. But uh, since I'm far enough away, I've recognized that maybe not a good idea. And it's working out. That worked really well. I'm surprised I didn't come up with that earlier. I mean, I've been playing this for four years, and it took me until now to figure out, eh, actually running straight forward might, be work, might work better. <laughs> now this is the second biggest break in the game because uh, it takes so long to make this journey, and then to take down this huge stronghold with three people. If you need to uh, take a bathroom break during the run, which I almost need to, but I'm going to hold it. It's still hard. But if you're super desperate, after defeating Gerardo in Chronicle 15 and this spot right here are your two biggest time sinks. It just takes so long for it all to come to pass. Yeah, I'm not going to gain back any time. That shop visit really ruined me. On a three-hour run, with a lot of uh, when a lot of small things can take a lot of time, it's really hard to avoid doing an accidental save uh, time waste or an accidental shop time waste on some of these maps where I don't get five people. Especially this one. Getting only three after having at least five or four for ten Chronicles in a row. I mean, it's been since Chronicle 4 was the last time we had three characters. Chronicle 4. And all of a sudden we have three again. Luckily, from here on out, we will have five. But it's just so... Drives me insane. Battle 1. I must move on. Already up to 43. That lowers that high. Well, I am at 16. It's only a couple away. He has missed a couple of uh, major battle. But 
Well, not as losing as much time as I was really afraid I would, but again, skipping all that dialogue really does save a lot of time. So even the really bad accidental shop thing uh, didn't really kill me. Still three minutes ahead, which means I have a really strong chance of getting a peek, provided that uh, everything goes fairly well over mostly the next two Chronicles. And the final fight with Strife. 19 is fairly reliable. Rarely goes very much uh, under. Kind of depends on... Uh, I need to try uh, starting at 3, just in case. If I don't die, uh, which I usually don't, but occasionally both Mega and Sophitia can be really rough. So this is the one Chronicle in the game where I will be fighting the Soul Calibur character. Uh, because tucked away in this southern path, which is supposed to be more out of the way, is Sophitia and Tira. But it just so happens that this tucked out of the way path is actually shorter than everywhere else because I'll only be fighting a total of three people in these two buildings. While if I were to go the other potentially good way, I'd have to fight at least probably five because they'd all be gathering around there. Uh, would get pretty rough, so we get to skip all that. But we do have to deal with some high level people. It does mean we get uh, more experience for based for time. We actually, I think, get more experience from these fights than we would uh, fighting all those extra fights because mostly they're just generics. But uh, just because of loading times, it would be longer. So it's definitely better. It makes this a surprisingly short one considering how deep in we are. Only seven minutes uh, on my gold. Oh, please. Okay, good. Mega's being kind of bad. Let's see how Sophitia is. Battle two, fight. Absolutely horrible. How could you? Okay, so I didn't die, which is a plus, but uh, those fights were rough enough that I'm not likely to save a lot of time from my PB. My PB was kind of similar to this. I didn't die, but I suffered enough damage that I and uh, had a rough enough fight that it took extra time that uh, things did not go great. Either that or I died on just the last guy. I remember. I know it's 30 seconds or 29 to be exact, 28 and a half. Uh, longer but you know roughly 30 seconds longer than my best time which it's close to a minute if you die before the main battle it's a lot less after because uh you don't lose the time of characters potentially it also puts me in a dangerous spot so it means that i'm going to be doing another one of those uh back off strats when i'm fighting uh tira because before i start the battle with tira because tira could very easily kill me as a level 60 assassin and that would waste a lot of time, and I'd rather not have that happen. So it would it's uh, definitely a lot faster to slightly to lose time giving a slight order to back off. Decisive battle. Stop that. Bring 
<sighs> well, the good news is this isn't going to lose me an enormous amount of time. The bad news is that's definitely I'm going to lose time on this split now because Tira decided to be the absolute worst she could possibly be and be totally unfair. Well, Sofitia and Tira. Normally, for the longest time, too, I didn't have any trouble with either one of them. Uh, and then I started to have a little bit of trouble with Sofitia, and then when I got her figured out again, Tira started giving me more gruff. This time, both of them just decided. Again, it's just all it... It's, uh, the game decides. Now, the worst part is, of course, and the thing that makes it bad is that not only... Am I, uh, have the extra time from having to load up an extra character and, uh, all of that, but because I am now down a character, that decreases the, uh, or it rather increases the amount of time it takes me to take the stronghold by 20%. And I could build this up and she'd respawn a bit closer, but she actually wouldn't reach there in time to do any good. Or at least I normally would think not. Maybe being far enough away means it would have been different, but... I might have been able to save a small amount of time restoring her. Oh well. Too late now. A lot of these, it generally isn't worth it. I'm pretty sure that the last few times I did this, it didn't seem... But... I guess I misremembered. I'm gonna lose even more time. I was really hoping to at least get another 10, 15 seconds back here. Darn it. Still on, definitely on PB place. Feeling really good at being on PB pace, but. thing to note about this guy is that he is uh, unusually tall. I briefly mentioned Arion back in Chronicle 4. This guy similarly is, for some strange reason, extremely tall. Don't know why that is, but otherwise he's just like any of the other uh, fashion characters, but just for some reason, very tall. Also very rude, because uh, he has on block. Normally he's pretty easy but because he's un all unblockable, he is uh, an extreme example of the uh, the AI can decides whether you live or die. Because if he decides to attack, I can't do anything about it because he's all unblockable. So I have to just attack him full force and hope that he doesn't do anything. So the enemies that we were supposed to be fighting here were actually the guys that were in our party before. And everyone we defeat, plus an AS who again, just like Aelion back in Chronicle 8 is the speaker... Uh, we'll end up joining our party. Uh, it doesn't make any difference in any of the speedruns because it isn't worth the time to go and get them, but it is uh, very important casually for getting back all of your good characters again, and you feel definitely feel better. They're controlled. They're fighting you because they're controlled by uh, the forces of Bull Edge. Darn it, losing time here because of uh, forgetting how to do that properly. You are two. Everyone else is three. Now we're fighting Abilia, who naturally is going to stand in our way. Uh, she's been assigned to defend this point, and because we are going against Grandal, we are a traitor, and she will strike us down no matter what. I played this one often enough recently that I think I know how this should go, how far I can go.
Oh, I could have ordered them all the way up there. Nope, I slightly messed that up. Oh, well. Good news is this went roughly bad in my PB, so I do have another chance of getting one more minute out. And to think with all these little time loss and stuff, yes, I could still very easily get a sub three if uh, everything goes right. Especially these fights, which are not going right. Too many enemies being way too aggressive at the start, and more than they should be. She suffered a loss, and it wasn't even a loss to the usual person. Usually my first Swordmaster suffers a loss, AG. And that's about it. Maybe one against Strife, but she's almost never the person, or against uh, Gerardo, but she's almost never the person to fight against Gerardo, so... Now, yesterday, the final straw that prevented me from uh, having any chance to PB actually came right here. Because this person decided to be super aggressive and kill me, even though they shouldn't have any chance of ever killing a sword mask. Just crazy and lucky uh, ring out and all that. Uh, so... When all else fails, double A string, uh, which is square on a PS2 controller, is uh, your best friend in any of the Soul Calibur games. Also, our level 3 character, who is a flaw in the programming, probably intended to be a uh, level 3 character in Chronicle 1, but they decided to either skip him or they just forgot about him. So when he showed up here, he showed up level 3 instead of being upgraded to 35 and 34 like Ishtar and Notice had been. Or 36. Whatever. Okay. Already going to be a lot better than uh, yesterday's. Because I didn't lose here. Losing here loses a lot of time because... Uh, that's, again, another person who isn't feeding on two strongholds. Now he can join the group taking this down, and nobody else is going to fight me until the uh, final battle, once I take that stronghold. Uh, this is one of my... This one doesn't matter as much here. I'm kind of proud of it, but it's not as big a deal as it is in SC%. Uh, I, I just like the fact that I get to do something slightly different by changing to a cavalry here. The reason I've changed to a cavalry is because this is another map where I lose if my main character dies, so I want to prevent her from dying at any cost, so... Rather than having her getting involved in this fighting, I'm, tr I'm using her to uh, lead away a bunch of enemies. And I get a lot more in SC% percent because I have to go down the southern route to take on Siegfried. But this is a lot quicker for uh, any percent. Battle one, fight. Jeez, seriously? Seriously? Stop that! A nobody! You just have no idea how frustrating it is when an ordinary, you know, a, a nameless, generic soldier suddenly decides to be a superhero and aggressively punish you like that in absurd ways. Especially a dancer, of all people. Did you really expect to get the better of my blade? But anyway, uh, I think it's fine on this one, normally even for a bandit. So I probably don't really need to go Cavalry. Maybe I can even cut that out. But uh, I know on SC% percent I really need to do Cavalry because there are more people taking the Stronghold, so they take it faster. But uh, it's the same kind of plug maneuver I've used before. Once they take that Stronghold, they won't be able to fight me uh, because I am going to be standing in the way.
fairly balanced stats overall. And because when you take a stronghold it goes down, it's going to have less hit points for me to take. And my bandit would do enough damage to take the thing, and then I'd suddenly be forced into combat with them. But uh, because uh, I'm only going to be a cavalry and only and going to be doing the minimum amount of damage to the stronghold, I won't take it before they uh, end up taking this main stronghold here. I'm going to want to pull one of my guys off here for a couple of reasons. Although one of them doesn't actually apply. Sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? With just those two, they won't take that since I've built it up to three. Building up to three probably isn't even necessary, quite honestly. I actually want less people fighting here, though. I do want three for safety. Two is super dangerous, which I did have yesterday, but... Final battle against Abilia. Only the second. Like uh, several of the others, she's changed her outfit for her second uh, encounter. Like Chester did, like uh, Luna did for her final one. Um, Gerardo for his second fight. I will not lose against a traitor, even if it is you. Battle one, fight. Did I do it Oh yeah. I almost forgot <laughs> for some reason, although uh, it's part of my main strategy. But yes, she is also Guardian Force. Luckily, the final one in the game. And in some ways, the easiest because she has no additional benefit. Her stats are the worst, but her stats are bad. But they actually are better than AG. I'm higher level now, so they're operatively not super duper better. Uh, most importantly, she doesn't have a weapon that uh, damages her when she attacks, though, which is slightly dangerous. So if she gets super aggressive, I can't do much against her. She does take chip damage when she blocks, but she can do a lot more than that to me by counterattacking afterwards. But uh, since she has no way of recovering life, she will eventually go down. I don't care if she does, if she kills me though. It's kind of more convenient if uh, she kills a couple of my people. Two would have been okay here, but sometimes uh, I have gone at her with two before, and she's killed both of them, and then I'm in dire straits. I lose a lot of time. Okay, Abelia down. Now, unfortunately, I have to, the other two characters, even though they don't have the glow around them, they still have Guardian Force, so I have to try and do something special to take care of them, but that wasn't it. Okay. Uh, I can still recover from this. Come on. I lead him to the edge here by hopping backwards and uh, far away. I have one more character to try it, to beat them. Get a horse to water. Can't make them drink. That was kind of bad. And I fell out, so I've lost all my guys. Oh no. Well, this is not actually worrisome because uh, I don't actually need to kill them. This is one of the few times... Now, usually, uh, there are a lot of things where... Except for the couple that I've played where I have to defeat all enemies uh, that I've made note of, the objective is almost always defeating the enemy stronghold, and I never made mention of it. Now, sometimes it's actually defeating the final boss in the stronghold, but since there is only one guy and the stronghold it doesn't matter it's the exact same thing so it's it's kind of pointless but uh in that particular circumstance it actually is back to bandit faster 
to uh, just kill the person off and not take out the stronghold because even though they are weak and low level, Guardian Force is so bad it still uh, works better overall to... Suicide afterwards, which is why I backed off one of my guys, because three, I've never lost all of them to uh, Abelia. It would be faster potentially with two or even one if I could guarantee take her out, but one is definitely not safe. Two is very dangerous. I did it last last night out of necessity, uh, but most of the time when I've tried to do it for speed, people have told me that, you know, after watching and like, you know, if you bring less people, you did fine. You beat her with one person or you beat her, you know, and I've seen beer too. So that'd be all you need. You back off more people. That's less time you have to spend. You could save some time there. And I'm like, that's a great idea. And I tried it three three runs in a row and uh, she beat both of my characters. She decided to be more aggressive because they're only two or whatever. And so I lost my runs because of that. So definitely not uh, something. I, I just generally go with safety and go with If I'm super duper close to obsessed, if I get something like a 301 and then I'm super obsessed with trying to squeeze out the last two minutes to get a sub three, maybe I'll try a, a two. But at this point, I still think that it's better just to go with the 301. But on that note, uh, three minutes with only two Chronicles. Now, I did have a super fantastic 19 and 20. Uh, so I could very easily lose those three minutes just against Strife. And more than that. But uh, it's looking pretty good. This generally... I don't fight that many battles here. And so I can't potentially... I uh, I could very easily lose half a minute here. But probably not much more than that. Depending on how the fights go. But... Battle. After my last four or five tries at any percent have just gone sideways way early, left a bitter taste in my mouth. It feels good. I've had some struggles in this one, a couple of rough things that are frustrating, but it's been a pretty darn good run. Battle one, fight. Being three minutes ahead at this point feels very nice. That's a perfect. Super best, but uh, good enough. I'm sorry, but I must move on. Same as last night, my level is a little low for this point, actually, being only 47. might actually be the one to yeah she's 19 she's definitely one. losing a little bit of time from uh, bad orders then because of that yeah just because i didn't go all the way in anyway. to reorder everybody again those are the things that are really hard to do the no mistakes of like my stream froze for a second, but uh, not the actual uploading screen at least. Alright, so one of the enemies is going to come out of the southern base, so I run one character down to intercept them. And again, uh, since I am trying to get a little bit of experience rounded out to everybody, my lowest level character is the one who I'm sending down, who right now is Tifa. I don't know if this is the best video for uh, 
I'm planning to submit this to the Corona Relief, which I have two days to do. Uh, I'm kind of one. I was kind of wondering if I wanted to use this one as the submission video, but why not? It's uh, going well enough. There's some things I'm not uh, explaining as well as I have since I've been actually, despite my hiatus of last month, this year so far because of uh, quitting my job, I've actually streamed a lot more and a lot more in succession than I have normally. So a lot of the things I feel fine about repeating a lot, which is a lot of the base information, I haven't done quite as much and I get tired of a little bit. Talking about this for uh, three hours can be a little bit rough. At least doing it constantly. But uh, I think I've got more than enough here. So that's all we need there. Now we just got two more strongholds to take out. A bunch of guys in the way which are annoying. But uh, easy enough to do. And then one last plug strategy. And then we get to use a totally uh, totally different strat. Unique to... Unique strat for the final chronicle. Not new. It, I've been using it since the beginning. But it's uh, not something that... Uh, is used anywhere else in the run because it's inefficient, but it just happens to work for the last one. First, we have to deal with paralysis glue. And uh, once again, I'm going to take some time to point out the one of the great English descriptions in this game. Perfect. All the fights are going well. One of the uh, interesting things about this chronicle is these generic guys. There have been generic soldiers interspersed with the elite named ones in most of the chronicles. But uh, this one's kind of weird because all the unique, the, the generic guys are in the very back here. And they don't move forward aggressively until you get very close to them. One of them, in fact, when you're about halfway through the capital, retreats. She's standing outside. You can see four of them if you check it early in the uh, chronicle. But by the time you reach here, she's already retreated back into the middle. She always does that when you're about halfway through the city, no matter what route you come by, where you're heading to exactly. Uh, so that's why there are two in the enemy capital instead of just the uh, one uh, boss. Kind of a weird little thing. It's rather annoying, too, that they really you have to be close to trigger their AI, because I would love to wait and get all three at once, but that's impossible. You always have to fight them in uh, two groups. Luckily, not even they are giving me trouble. Not for lack of trying. Okay, he just did. You should really give up. I'm sorry, but I must move on. That way. Now let's see if I messed up yesterday. Okay, good. Yep. He reaches before they do. So now I serve once again as a plug. She wants to run back to defend, but she can't because I'm there. He wants to run up to defend, but he can't because... Uh, they can't move through here because I already have a character occupying, and the AI just will not uh, 
fight to defend their stronghold. So, and they will take the main stronghold long before a single character takes that one. Which is very good. Saves me a fight. And now we have just three minutes of waiting, or two and a half-ish minutes of waiting and bringing this down and then taking on the last couple fights. A thousand hit points. Yes, this is indeed the most powerful stronghold in the game. At least with uh, its durability. Its mission, All Guard Break, is pretty much meaningless. It's one of the most unimportant. Despite the incredible lightning look on the enemy's weapon, it's pretty unimportant. It actually allows me to do a glitch if I use a different kind of weapon to potentially do a huge amount of damage in, at once, but uh, it's not worth the time to switch to a weapon that could do that. I've shown that off before. It's one of the things. It's a little tiny highlight in my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel. The uh, guard break glitch. If uh, it involves, I mentioned a weapon property that can cause occasional guard breaks. And if that triggers on a hit that then has another hit on the frame afterwards, that hit that hits them while their guard break stunned for some reason does half their health and damage. It's really incredible. Battle two, fight. And Chester again. Yes, Chester is our final uh, stronghold boss. Ha ha ha. Very well done, Chester. Normally he's not very tough, even though he's a level 60 sword master. And has very, very good stats. You can see how little damage I was doing to him, since he's 30 levels above me. But uh, that weapon is just not strong at all. Did my fights go well enough that I'm actually going to gold? That's pretty incredible. That's a nice gold, too. Holy cow, I can hardly believe it. Gives me a very good chance now of getting a... Uh, a PB. I, in order to not PB at least a little, I have to have an absolutely horrendous uh, final thing here. Now back to infantry. So in this one, there are no strongholds. Since your characters have to have a stronghold to respawn, it means that I, like the rest of uh, all my enemies, only have one life in this one. So I can't afford to lose any characters, and especially my main character. Your main character has to be alive, so the, it's also the only chronicle with a single loss condition. I lose my main character, I lose. Otherwise, I'm fine. That messed up slightly. All right. Uh, however, it's also the only chronicle other than the tutorial where none of the enemies move. So, uh, I kind of, usually I mention this a little bit more than I have this time, that uh, certain enemies um, will automatically start combat with you when you run into them, including Strife here. They uh, want these ki these characters are important, and they don't want you to cheese them by overwhelming them uh, with forces, just like I'm doing right here. They're just exactly this, because if you gang up five on one, they will go down very, very, very quickly. It's uh, just basic numbers thing. It's the kind of stuff like, say, to pick something really random and out there for a speedrunner, Day 9 explaining StarCraft and having more stuff than the opponent, even if they're bad, you can overwhelm them. Well, bandits are so bad, they would not be able to overwhelm the enemy, but uh, as it turns out, uh, infantry are good enough. I choose infantry. They do less damage than knights, but knights are just so slow, they would be the very worst. Cavalry are a little bit too weak. If I had, like, a sixth person, cavalry would probably be worth it. Uh, and that would go a whole lot faster. Boy, it'd be nice if I had six people in every chronicle. How many uh, more things I could do. It wouldn't actually help, though, because you have five maximum anyway. But in an alternate universe where you could actually get, like, five-ish people, more than five people in a group and everything, it would be super great. 
Now, I don't want to lose my main character because then I lose the Chronicle, but uh, I also don't want my main character to fight because not only is it dangerous to be one shot even at full health because he's so powerful, but I also get a cutscene if I fight him with my main character that I skip otherwise. So, since we want to skip that cutscene, it's like the only skippable cutscene in the game. Uh, I would rather not fight with my main character, but we're not going to. Uh, she is going to be almost dead at this point, but that's just fine. Almost dead is not the same as totally dead. Nearly dead. Mostly dead. Yes, she's going to be mostly dead, but not quite all the way dead. Which is perfectly fine for my purposes. One hit point is uh, the same as infinite for her. There's two more people to go through. Uh, who else has taken damage? Only two so far. Nope, three. Kind of evenly spread. Lena? Okay. She will also almost be mostly dead. Unfortunately, Silas took some damage as well. But I have two uninjured characters, and if it flows like it did last time, like yesterday, it's kind of random because uh, the levels I get are not always consistent because of so many things like deaths. Just barely surviving. Excellent. Holy cow, actually kind of bad. They killed each other. That is super rare. And again, kind of bad. Just because it slows this down. She was just too weak. That is very unfortunate. And that was Lena. Yeah. So I need to remember to get a little bit more hit points on my third person because she takes the second most normally. There's a couple of factors, I say, that determine how many hit points they have left and everything and if they'll survive and it's how many battles they've been in. Very unfortunate though, my main character got the final level up. That's a waste of time. Because uh, she definitely can't use it now. She won't be using it for anything more. So Meliodul and Tifa will be the her heroines of this adventure, hopefully. Uh, if both of them die, it's very bad. Yeah, because of that extra time loss, I'm definitely not going to get a gold here, and I can't get my sub-30, but I could very well get a sub-302. Uh, final uh, time comes when his shield turns red. It's the reliable way to know that he's been beaten. Because if I uh, hit him with a ring out when he's close to uh, half dead, it uh, so at this point it's going to be when he's either ring out or KO, because uh, he's now less than half health. The ring out is guaranteed to kill him now since uh, it does half heal. Perfect. Very very good fight there, and that is a wonderful PB. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Not quite as good as I really wanted. Not my sub-3, but sub-3 definitely possible. I still had a lot of time I could save there. Uh, 10 seconds lost to minor control in the tutorial and to a slight mess up on time and uh, orders in Chronicle 1. Chronicle 2 wasn't the very best. Uh, slight flip up there was decent. Chronicle 3, I lost some time I shouldn't have. Uh, four as well. Just mostly control issues there, I think. Maybe a little bit of bad fights. Five, I should have gained a lot more time there, but I did have that, uh, really terrible fight. Six was pretty much okay. Seven was great. Uh, eight was also decent. I got my nine. I can still do better on nine, into darkness. Not that much better. Ten's the one. Ten, I can do a lot better on that one. Still. Hey, thanks. I'm glad. I'll be running D&D uh, the next two days. I've been trying to do this, but got distracted and then sick, so I went off the schedule. But I'm trying to do Soul Calibur Monday and Tuesday, and then uh, Pool of Radiance runs. It'll be Pool of Radiance, specifically, uh, the next two days because I'm working on that for RPG Limit Break, even though it looks like that's going to be delayed. Don't have that determined yet, but... Uh, then by the fireside, 
They told the tales With this going the on, that's likely good face. Pay attention to this statue. Those Look at that animatronic moving hand. Wonderful. Medieval statues. That happens because of the style that my main character is using. If your main character uses a style other than Shang Wa, I think you don't get that moving hand, but it's one of the nice benefits to doing that. So that was my Soul Calibur 3 Chronicles of the Sword run. Thanks for watching. Finally got a grind on a really, really good PB, and that felt nice. Still still got places I can uh, make up, improve. I lost nearly a minute on 17, for instance, because of uh, those poor fights and a really bad, stupid death, but... That, that's sub three, but I'll put this away for a while now, and even my Soul Calibur ones, I'll be working on other ones. That's it for tonight. The legend Thanks for watching. Tomorrow night we'll be doing some Pool of Radiance. And uh, the next night as well, Calibur most likely. Three. They'll try and work on those. We'll be submitting this as well as my Gold Box runs to... Uh, the GDQs coming up too, both the Corona the Relief one and the history. actual S delayed SGDQ. Not likely to make it in, but you know, always a chance, and I want to get the opportunity to show these off. So have a good night, we will see you later.